Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. Heidi Hall is with us here as we talk about the Hat Man evil stories. Heidi, I, I'm amazed that they haven't gotten to you yet, these entities. <laughs> Thanks a lot, George, for that vote of confidence. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to give you my condolences about your sister. Oh, thank you. thank you. I feel the same way when it comes to cell phones, honestly. I, I just had to share that. Um, that that's horrific. Um, you know, I... When it comes to these these negative things, I I used to really truly be quite pretty much victimized all the time by these things, and I grew tired of it. And I was glad to say that you know I I had to lose my fear in order to confront these things when they confronted me. Not not to challenge them like I could do it all on my own. I I had to keep my faith and my prayers going to to be able to do what I do, but. Uh, you know, I, I encourage everybody that this is all something very possible. And I also encourage everybody to go on to Facebook and type in Shadow People and Hat Man Experiencers Group. That's my group on there. And also ParanormalPledge.com, uh, trying to get people to start speaking about these things and sharing their experiences. And we're helping each other to, you know, build up a brick wall against these negative things because we don't have to allow this stuff to go on. And I don't care if it's negative alien beings, ghosts. Uh, possessions, shadow people, hat man, anything and everything, and it, it's possible. And uh, I'm trying to encourage that, and with Paranormal Pledge, to try to encourage people to start sharing with the next person, to make it, to let people know that this is not something that is so rare that's happening, anything that's out of the ordinary, but the paranormal is quite normal. And if anybody wants to get a hold of me, HeidiHollis.com, also to be able to reach out and share your experiences. And uh, I do my best to respond to every email that's sent to me and uh, try to give some level-headed advice about it. I'm not a know-it-all. I'm not a psychic. Just someone that's been through a lot of crap and as far as the darkness is concerned and also experienced the light. I, I have a book called Jesus is No Joke. I, I was a skeptic of Jesus encounters, and lo and behold, I, I had some myself, and got healed of something that is uh, miraculous that my doctors have a hard time believing. But, huh. you know, the good side is out there, and it is winning. And uh, I hope so. You, yeah, better yeah. Be, you better be able to embrace it, too. Let's take some calls here for you. Buck is in West Virginia. Hey, Buck, go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my call, George. Yes, sir. I, I'd like to ask your uh, guest. This happened to my wife a couple of years ago. She was, uh, first of all, she said to me, Buck, you're not going to believe this, but I was sitting on the bed folding clothes, and out of the corner of my eye, I, I caught what appeared to be uh, a, an old woman. She said, I couldn't make it out. It looked almost like a shadow. She'd never heard of shadow people. Anyway, she said this woman had like a babushka on, and she was menacing looking, and and since then, She's come to find that the woman ha has a name. She saw a picture of the same thing on the Internet, and, the, and her name was Strega Nora. Have you ever heard that? She, it, she said it looked like she had a hood on or a babushka, and, and that actually means Grandma Witch. Have you ever heard oh, of anything? Sounds like, like the old tag, Heidi. It really does. It sounds very much like her. Yeah, um, honestly, that that's... That's a phenomenon that's been going on for some time where people are reporting seeing this grotesque uh, little woman that uh, feels like they're, she's, she's taking the life out of people. Um, I had one recently write me telling me about that, that uh, this is horrible. The, the lady woke up to this thing and this, this little nasty woman that was uh, mimicking and mocking her, she was saying, no, please go away, please go away. And the thing said, please go away, please go away. I mean, it's a horrific thing. And then she, this thing leaned over her and started inhaling 
her her breath, like taking her breath away. So yeah, this this is a, an entity that's been harassing and haunting people for a, quite some time. Okay, let's go next to John in St. Louis, first time caller. Hey, John, go ahead. Hey, thanks, George, for taking my call. Sure thing. Yeah, I've never uh, until your show, which I've listened to for quite a while, but I've never heard of this uh, this hat man. Uh, oh boy. People before, but, but whenever I was a uh, a kid, I was about 10, and I, I lived in Arkansas. I was uh, at a friend's house, and they had done, recently done a bunch of clearing uh, in the back. And I was in a, uh, what was left of uh, some, a plum orchard. And uh, we had made a little, me and the, my friend had made like a little cave back there. And uh, I was on, I looked at the ground, and the sun was at my back. And uh, right at my feet, in front of me, about maybe two or three feet, I saw a, a the, the silhouette, a shadow, if you will, of a of a man with a cowboy hat on, and I saw the shoulders and the cowboy hat, and I turned around and there was no one there. When I turned back around, it was it was gone, and uh, I never really thought anything of it. Thought maybe I was just seeing stuff or whatever. But uh, after listening to y'all show, I don't I don't know. And then I was, so I told my friend about it, and uh, because he wasn't there at the time. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, our, our house is haunted. And uh, later, uh, I guess a couple weeks later, um, I was there and I was, I was playing video games in, at, at night, obviously. I don't know why it's always at night that these things happen. But um, was that one time, you know, that was during the day. But anyways, I was playing uh, video games on the couch. And in the kitchen behind me, I heard, heard footsteps like boots walking across the, across the kitchen. It was the strangest thing. I was the only one uh, there. He was in his room. His mom was asleep. So. Uh, yeah, there's really there's really something to it. Uh, but anyway, so thanks for taking my call. I, I love your show. I Thank you, John. Night. So, uh, yeah. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Stay cool out there in St. Louis. It's, yeah, it's been enough, very it's a, hot. It's a common pattern with the hat man and uh, walking heavily through people's homes. It sounds like boots uh, creeping through people's homes for some reason. So he does like to let his presence be known. And, you know, it's. It's interesting to me, you know, how a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, you know, like he's he's brand new to realizing others have experienced him. And, you know, it, for people who don't know, I actually named the hat man Shadow People as well in, in uh, my books. And it's it's so amazing to me how still, after so many years, I first wrote the book in 97, and to hear people, you know, still realizing, like, wow, I'm I'm not alone. This is This is something that's been happening to others. So... You know, welcome to the, the horrible club of people who have experienced such an evil entity. But uh, it's going on worldwide. Same look, same feel. Give us one of your stories of old hags. What oh. do you have in your little repertoire of stories? <laughs> well, you know, this is this is interesting because uh, this one is, is fascinating to me when it comes to the old hag because this is the one that I told you in regards to uh, the hat man and the old hag. So this gentleman that wrote me not too long ago had the hat man approach him and while he was laying in bed. It's always in bed when your guard is down. And he felt paralyzed. And the hat man took his long claw of a hand, for some reason it looked claw-like to this gentleman, and pointed at the doorway. And there appeared this little grandma looking entity that looked angry at the at the guy and came up to him and went to touch his his forehead and knocked him out <laughs> knocked <laughs> him out knocked him out yeah so it just honestly like she's i don't know what what her whole purpose is and what her exact connection is to the hat man but she has been seen with him on a handful of times, and this is this is something newer that's been coming to me that it's just kind of blowing my mind. Like, wow, the old hag has has been busy. <laughs> has the old hag ever killed anybody? You know, I really, I, when it comes to these dark things, it's like I, I think who would know? So, what's that? Who would know? Yeah, exactly. It, the dark stuff is so out to get people. I really wouldn't be surprised. And the, the people that seem like fortunate, like when they feel that they're being they're being pulled out of their bodies and fighting for their soul to get returned back to their bodies. They feel as if if they if they didn't find a way back, that this would have been the end for them. So I am not surprised if uh, that's happened. Let's go to Kevin, truck driving in Iowa. Thanks for truck driving, first of all, Kevin, and go ahead. 
Hey, George. Uh, yeah, I've had an experience. Um, it's probably been about 10 years. Uh, I've only told this to probably maybe three people. Uh, I was asleep one night. Uh, well, my wife was beside me. I felt like there was something in the room, and but I noticed I couldn't move at all. Uh, I was just totally frozen. And then I felt like something was in the room with me, and other than my wife. And all I could move was my eyes. And Jeez. I felt like something was standing next to the bed. And I just kept telling myself that, you know, it's a night terror. It's a night terror. And then I felt like something had put his knee on the bed, and I could feel the bed go down. And all I wanted to do was wake my wife up because, I, I, I mean, I'm a veteran, and I don't share easily, but this terrified me. I felt helpless. And uh, I could feel it, like, right in my ear, and it whispered to me that it was going to take my wife, and there was oh, nothing I could do about it. And I was, like, just screaming inside, and but nothing would come out. And it, I don't know, it, it just kind of went away and went to the frame of the door going into our bathroom, and a bright light appeared, and I could see an outline. Uh, didn't have a hat on, but just a dark figure. Yeah. And then it was gone. And the moment it was gone, I was able to wake up, and I woke up my wife, and I, mean, I was in tears. It was just total terror. Yes. What do you think happened to him, Heidi? You know, that's something that I've heard about as well, that, you know, the hat man will come to people, and he's not quite getting the, the level of terror that he wants to get. So he seems to invoke even more by saying, I'm going to get your child. I'm going to get your wife. I'm going to get this person. And then, you know, it rises up in the person to a point of, like you're saying, tears and feeling absolutely helpless. You know, a lot of people feel like, you know, I could take it, you know, and, and they have a, a better defense than, say, the next person, and they want to protect. They're a protector of sorts. And they want to protect their loved ones, and, and this thing knows this and tries to, play upon that, which is a, a really sad thing. I, I, it angers me so much, the, the, the tactics that he uses, that uh, is really abusive to people, honestly. So, We're with Heidi Hollis, of course, talking about some of her work. Her website is linked up at coasttocoastam.com. It is HeidiHollis.com. Very clever website there, Heidi. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite color, purple, let's, how to put it. Let's go out to Des Moines, Iowa. It's Greg's turn. He's been on hold. Greg, welcome to the program. Hey, George. Hey, Heidi. How are you guys doing? Great. Thank hey. you. Hey, Heidi. Um, I've been wondering about this story for a long time that my grandpa has been telling me. And uh, he always, his eyes are bugging out of his head. You can tell he's really had this experience. And uh, he said he used to wash dishes at a grocery store uh, on the south side of Des Moines, and he'd ride the bus home every night. And he said that this one night that he got off was different, and he said it was quiet. He couldn't hear birds. He couldn't hear crickets. And he said he was walking on the dirt road home, and there's a there used to be a park, uh, a small park, and he said he sensed something from behind him. And he turned to his left a little bit, and he saw, and it was just a perfect outline of a human being he said it was just a shadow, just dark, pitch black, and he said it, it literally touched him. He could feel it physically touch his shoulder, and he said he, he was so scared that all he remembered after that was dust behind him, looking up at the moon, running home, and he slammed the door open when he got home, and his mom, my great-grandma, didn't know what was going on. But I don't know if you knew, can it change the environment? Does it have the power to do that? Can it make it silent? Oh, gosh. It, yeah, that's actually another common pattern. Uh, people say, you know, Suddenly, I don't hear the crickets. The birds aren't outside, you know, and, and they know that a presence is near that's just not right. So, yeah, he does. Uh, well, it's not just him. It's shadow people, too, um, that, that kind of instill that in the environment. Like, why is it so quiet? Things aren't humming. There's not that buzz in the air of life. Like, it's draining life out of the air. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's. I've heard of people being so absolutely terrified by the presence of any of these negative things where it's almost like they black out and, and they yeah. bolt and they run. And uh, it, it's, it's a, you know, fight or flight type of <laughs> reaction, which I don't blame people. So, I mean, it could save your life. I, I think getting around people definitely helps to uh, uh, repel these types of negativity. 
Heidi, in uh, eastern France, hundreds of graves were vandalized. They were desecrated. It was a Jewish cemetery. Uh, I don't know why people are so sick, but they smashed tombstones and everything else. When you do something like that, when you disrupt the dead, will they get even with you? <laughs> well, you know, some of us might hope so, but <laughs> I I don't I don't know always if that's the case. I mean, I think there'd be a lot of people having a lot of issues because I think a lot of teenagers tend to hang out in those places for some reason. But, uh, you know, when it comes to graveyards, it just seems that Hat Man and Shadow people do like to hang out in those areas. So they love negative acts. They love negativity. And they may be the things that would follow you home, to be honest. And I find this to be the case when it comes to, you know, children, so-called children haunting houses. Children aren't haunting houses. Nine times out of ten, you'll find that that's something demonic, and it's usually uh, shadow people related, hat Uh, man related. Is it a trick? It always seems to come up. Do they trick you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they do. I mean, what child do you know would be allowed to roam the earth aimlessly? What kind of God would do that? Chucky. Oh, Chucky. (laughs) There you go. It would be him. (laughs) My goodness. It almost seems that way, but... You know, it, it's it, it's interesting to me how, you know, the the child, it's, it's oh, it's just a kid ghost. You know, so the person is more welcoming and lets their guard down, and lo and behold, the thing starts scratching them, and it's the three scratches, you know, that, uh, you know, resemble the, the Trinity. It mocks the Trinity. And it's it's something that uh, I always see this build up, and people are like, oh, I thought it was something innocent, and, and it turned out not to be. And I'm like, it's not welcome. It shouldn't be there. You know, don't welcome it. Don't allow it to stay because it will build up and it will, uh, you know, betray your trust at some point. I, I just don't believe in there being Casper the Friendly Ghost wandering around. <laughs> no, I mean, you take the posture that there's a lot of evil out there, Heidi, don't you? As good as you are, and I know you, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you, people are still watching your Beyond Belief TV show you did with me months ago. Uh, they love that. Uh, and cool. people, you can watch Heidi, beyondbelief.com. We did a program months ago, and she just knocked the socks off fun. everybody. But, but but you are generally, you don't like to surround yourself with evil at all. No. Some people who are experts like you are, they enjoy dabbling on the evil side. Why do they do that? I do not understand that. I, I just don't get it. It's there's enough evil in the world. Why do you have to seek it out? And, you know, the ghost hunting, I don't do that personally either. I do try to help people help themselves in those situations, but I don't go out there and say, well, let me try to make this ghost angry and see if I could get a rise out of them and get them to talk to me. Not smart. It, yeah, it really isn't. It's inviting them. I mean, if you want to have a peaceful life, which I do, I, I do not get bothered by these negative things. When I was writing the Hat Man book, <laughs> The hat man kind of tried to show himself a few times, but you know what? That's I expected him to get upset, and I'm glad because that let me know that I'm on the right track and trying to, uh, you know, rile some, uh, <laughs> rile some things up out there. So, you know, it's 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 been an interesting life, I could tell you that. I, I consider myself to be more of a Christian paranormal author, and I have all these books, you know, I have the picture prayers, Jesus is no joke, and... Uh, the other F-word books, you know, on faith and positive stuff. Heidi, I've got a great idea for your next book, Conversations with the Hat Man. Ooh, that sounds like a good one. Have them talk to you. You interview them for the book. Oh, me? It, oh, no, thanks, no. Come on. <laughs> no, you first, George. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. Dot's with us in Salt Lake City. Hello, Dot. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm I'm glad you had that break because I was laughing, and this isn't really a funny matter, but I wanted to tell you first about, um, as I open, with the um, the old hack. Okay. I have a beautiful blonde daughter that um, wanted to serve on a mission, and I said, no, I don't want my girls. I'm the type that followed them around and always take care of them and don't let them call boys and nothing. <laughs> and I don't want her anywhere in a foreign country. So her father said, okay, if she got a call maybe to go to Australia, would let her go or something. And she's one of these that are like an angel, just pure. So she's a ditzy, though. Yeah. Blondes have a tendency to be that one. I'm thinking, <laughs> not far away from me, and how many times have I had to come for her and help her over here? 
she goes to Australia and she has um, some sister missionaries and they have been working harder than hard and had some success preaching the gospel. And they were on bicycles at that time and they had a flat over in Australia, Melbourne. And they had been having suspicious feelings about things, just creepy things that they were just the creepy feelings you get. So at night, that night when she went to bed, she goes, Mommy, she goes, I don't know if I was just so tired from riding that bike or if I was just paralyzed, but out of the corner of my eye, just as we we're going to sleep, she said, there's this woman with this, like a witch with this silver hair, and she was screaming, and she was furious, and she ran around, and then I could feel something on my back. And she said, uh, I didn't feel any appendages, but I couldn't, I couldn't move, and I, I couldn't breathe. And then she said, I literally felt like my feet were going through the mattress that she was pushing down so hard. And so she said, I ma managed to um, remember to just call out for the Lord to try to please help me because I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And she did that, and, and it left. So on that note, I want to tell you that you do not ever want to mess with these things. You don't want to call them for any reason whatsoever because the next person that I'm going to tell you about, he literally died. He um, what happened? had these images, and he, was, they're like poltergeists, and they mess with your house and uh -huh. and you, and and almost like the Bell Witch, and they just deep, deep demonic things. So when I met them, they had moved, and I said, "Well, why did you move?" And she says, "Well, I just have to tell you, you know, because they knew they, I think they were Jehovah's Witnesses, and I they knew I would understand." So. He had to move several times trying to get away from them, and you can't. They know where you are, and they would follow them. And he seemed to be more disturbed than she was about it, and it seemed like they were constantly berating and picking on him. And I went to the spa with my daughter, the same blonde-haired little girl, before she grew up. And when I was at the spa, this lady that I knew that was his wife, and they, he was a good-looking man. She was a beautiful woman. They had everything going for them. Um, she was crying, and she said her husband had died, and people had asked her, and she broke down and was crying. I go, oh, my gosh, what happened? She goes, well, remember what I told you? She said, for years this has been going on, and he just couldn't take it anymore. So the other night he got up out of bed, got his shotgun, and she said, I could hear him do this, oh, but I just didn't yeah. have the fortitude to stop him anymore. And he went out back of the um, acreage and just shot himself. Oh. That's terrible. Now, you know, my daughter and I get in the car, we're going terrible. home, and it's like if you make a long L and you make that turn. Well, I'm trying to tell her what happened to the lady because she goes, Mommy, Mommy, what happened to her? What's wrong? So I'm trying to explain it as, you know, she must have been 12. And as soon as we made the turn and got near his house, which I didn't even notice because I was so busy trying to calm her down and explain it to her, all of a sudden this fog right came right out in front of my car as I drove by his house and I couldn't see beyond my car, and it's a two-lane road. If I miss my half of the road, somebody coming the other way, that's a head-on for sure. So I slowed down, and my daughter, she's very, you know, um, has feelings about things. She goes, Mommy, don't stop. Don't stop. And I go, you can feel that? She goes, yeah, I feel it. Don't stop. I says, I won't. And I thought, but how do I drive through this? So after we kept going, and it was this cold, thick, whitest fog that I have ever seen, the whitest white. And I am a clean freak. There in the Clorox bottle that could get anything any whiter. <laughs> so we passed through it. And as we're driving home, we just sat there. We could hardly talk. We were so upset and scared because we didn't know what happened if we would stop. So when we look, there's not a cloud in the sky for over 50 miles. And we go up our hillside where our home was, get out of the car, and we're looking and searching. And you could see for almost 50 miles all the way through the valley, and there was not a cloud in the sky. Now, what the reason I know that this is 
true and things can happen like this. My husband's sister said she was in her bedroom one night at double doors, and all of a sudden this whitest, whitest fog, she said, rolled up under the doors, came over by her bed and started billowing and rising up higher and higher and higher. And she said she had to command it to leave her five times in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to leave. I've heard that before, Heidi, this yeah. kind of misty fog that blows in. Yes, I've seen it myself. Yeah. What, what is it? You know, it seems to be a manifestation of these negative things. That They could take that form as well, and sometimes they will absolutely transform into whatever it is that they are, a hat man, shadow people. I saw one even... Uh, transform into a, a gray's face, an alien's face. So uh, I don't know. It's it's strange, but it, it just seems to be like a, a looser uh, form of themselves. But, you know, it's interesting in talking about the old hag, talking about hat man, shadow people, even aliens, negative alien beings that, that abduct the sleep paralysis. They They all seem to work under the same guise of, paralyzing people in their sleep, taking advantage. And, you know, there's an element that uh, doesn't often get spoken of, shadow people, hat man. Sometimes there's a, a, a sexual abuse element, and aliens do the same. So, you know, I find more things that are, that are um, connected between all of them than not. And, again, I welcome anybody who's experiencing night terrors to write me at dustoutlander at gmail.com to participate in a new television uh, show project to help bring awareness to this and also to bring help to those that are suffering profusely with these things. So uh, it, it's something that I, I'm really passionate about, and I really hope to help as many people as I can. And I always welcome people to write me about what it is that they're experiencing, about anything out of the ordinary, even the good stuff, angel encounters, Jesus Perfect. encounters, all of that. And, uh, you know, just to have a, a you know somebody to vent to and, and to bounce uh, questions off from, and I always air it on my radio show too, and, and answer people. So, um, you know, it's it's something I, I would I would do it in my sleep if I could, George. I really enjoy helping people on these topics. Let's go to Jacob now in Louisville, Kentucky. Jacob, good morning. Hello, uh, hi, Jacob. Uh, I I believe um, it's, it's gonna. I don't know how to explain this to people because it's kind of weird for them, I guess, but. In my past life, I was a demon, mm. and yeah, it's a uh, it's weird. I know. How do you know that, and, Jacob? How do you know that? Um, I just remember it. You know, just okay. I, I don't. Um, when the the shadow people you you're talking about, yeah. they are the spirits that go to hell for a punishment. The punishment for them that was chosen by uh, Satan is to do this to the people. They don't like to do it, but they're forced to do it. Um, some of them might enjoy doing it, but uh, the, the hat man is, um, what I remember, is actually like the Jesus of Satan, like the Antichrist, I guess you could say, because he's mm -hmm. kind of like the sun, but not really. Um I, I've never heard of the white fog before, though. That's interesting. The fact that he would know he was a demon in another life or another existence, let me say it like that, <laughs> that's kind of scary, Heidi. It is. And you know what's fascinating to me, though? I have met many a people who are having these very, very vivid dreams or out-of-body experiences that showing up in a hell-like place, being tortured, participating in torturing others, and also the opposite, people who recall a heaven-like place and, you know, helping people, assisting people. You know, I, I'm no angel, George, but um, <laughs> I have a lot of memories in regards to, like, a heaven-like place and have received some interesting emails over the years, people saying, I don't know who you are, but I saw you in my dream." and you help me with something, and they'll, like, send me their picture, and they're like, do I look familiar to you? And it, But, you know, I'm not the only one. This has happened to other people. And it's like like-minded people are finding each other. And it's a really interesting phenomenon. And it's, and it's ongoing with these hell encounters, these hell experiences and heaven experiences. It's like people are, are showing up in the places that they're more closely related to. 
Let's go to our Skype caller in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Jesse's turn on Coast to Coast. Hi, Jesse. Hi, George. Good to have you with us. Go ahead, Jesse. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share my uh, hat man experience. Sure. So um, I've heard your guest, I believe, on your show a few years ago. Uh, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of Hat Man. And it really freaked me out because I had had this exact same experience she was describing practically like about a decade ago. Yeah. And um, I live in an area called Black Forest. So I'm on like five acres out in the woods. And uh, I had moved here with my parents and my brother in my 20s. And. I was in a pretty dark place in my life at that time. I, you know, kind of lost all my friends that we'd moved from California and my brother had been very depressed and, uh, you know, it was winter and it was, it was tough here adjusting. And so I was kind of in a bad spot and, um, you know, kind of depressed. And I remember, uh, waking up at like three fifteen in the morning, sort of that hazy in between, dream state and somebody was talking to me and the more and more I became cognizant of what was happening it was all these kind words reassuring but it was very um uh, uh creepy tone otherworldly tone and I, I I got this very uh, distinct uneasy feeling and as I became more and more aware of what was happening I kind of became in a sleep paralysis state where my eyes were open but I couldn't move. And at that time, I didn't see the hat man. I just got the impression he was around, either behind me, on the other side of the bed, uh, or something. And as this went on, um, I questioned it. It was sort of like a, I don't know, like a telepathic type communication on my part, I guess. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, still listening. We're Quiet. we're enthralled with what you're saying, Jesse. Yeah. Well, what happened was, uh, I I got the feeling that it wanted to, me to accept it and let it tell me all these nice things so that it could sort of take over. And somehow, I sort of allowed it to continue spewing, but I didn't trust it at all, and I didn't, I didn't like even communicate that I kept it you know like a you know a deeper place in my mind sure. and I sort of let myself uh get lulled back into a more sleep like state and just as I was about to totally pass out again I sort of astroplaned out the door you know and I'm in this side room and there's a like sliding glass door in the next room over I astroplane out the door and looked over to the right at the window next to my bed, and I saw a figure in a hat, and it was a low brim, and it was very short, and it was stooped on the rock, like a little rock wall next to the window, and it looked up, and it saw me, and it was like a sort of typical gray alien type body, huh. and I couldn't see the whole head, but it had... When it saw me, it it uh, sneered at me with this horrible jowl full of oh, jagged boy. teeth, and I saw the red eyes, and it freaked me out completely. And I woke up actually back in my bed instantly, and I was looking right out that window God. from my sleep paralysis state, only I could see it for a second, just the silhouette, and poof into that kind of gray smoke. And I must have stayed awake for another hour and a half. <laughs> I don't blame you. How do your impressions of this? Bad oh, dream, night terrors, something real. What? You know, it. If I I can't just uh, lump things to be like, oh, it's somebody's night terror, and, and it's not uh, anything that anyone could relate to. Everybody's experiencing very similar things. This thing was really, really trying to get at them, and and it lets me know personally when something makes such an effort to get someone and convince someone to let them in, it, he's a prize to be had, and he's not, gonna, he's not an easy target. So it's got to it's gotta woo him, and it's got to convince him, let your guard down, here I am. And yeah. I mean, it's... We it's, won't hurt you. Yeah, exactly. We won't hurt you. It's like, oh, yes, it will. And wow, 
you know, and I relate the shadow people and the hat man uh, being related to the alien phenomenon always have. And, uh, you know, these things, they exist. They're, they're connected. They're seen together sometimes. And, you know, to see this combination of an alien body with this, this hat, I mean, how bizarre. I mean, but it, it honestly, his, his story is pretty interesting, but there are a lot of people who feel uh, like this thing is con- trying to convince them to even work for them. I, I've had several people tell me that. I'm still baffled, though, ha- Heidi, what it wants. Is it after our souls? What the heck does it want? It wants the power, and it does want the souls. It wants everything. It's like the, the early explorers that wanted the land. They want everything. They want the power. They want to say that they control everything. And it seems like such a silly thing, but gosh, mankind really makes an effort to do all these same things, too. Sure does. Heidi, give out your websites and uh, information for people who might want to be in your film. Yes, uh, new TV series I'm working on, working uh, on, on the topics of night terrors, people that are experiencing nightmares, sleep paralysis, anything and everything as far as seeing odd things when they wake up. So write me at dustoutlander at gmail.com. Contact me at my website, Heidi Hollis. Dot com and uh, also to check out my many books, uh, The Hat Man, The Secret War, Jesus is No Joke, uh, Fickle Finders, a graphic novel that I did, and Picture Prayers, just as other F word dot com for a couple of other books that I'm doing as far as graphic novels. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can to try to wake people up and help them realize that, you know, what's going on and, you know, people need to reach for the light, whatever it is that you feel is positive in your your faith to go that route because the dark side is really betting on us that we're not going to figure them out, but we've got to we've got to come together on this stuff and uh and check out my website Paranormal Pledge and Shadow People Hatman Experiencers on Facebook and let's you know get the conversation rolling and uh you know, speak our minds, and, and let's not let the secret war take us out in our sleep, for crying let's, out loud. Let us not. Heidi, thank you so much. Welcome back to the program. My next guest, Heidi Hollis, sort of came to prominence uh, in in this uh, sort of the world of the paranormal by writing about something known as the shadow people. And since then, she's uh, spoken all over the world. She's got her own radio show called The Outlander. She's written a couple of, of uh, very well-received books, and we're, wel- we're happy to welcome her back to the program. Heidi, good to have you here. Well, my goodness, it's awesome to finally get a chance to talk to you. Yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, this title, Bam, Hat Man, that just jumped right out at me. That's a, that's a, that's a grabber. You must have known it right off the bat. Um, <laughs> right? Uh- well, I wanted to keep it direct. <laughs> you know, the the book is written, it's fun. It's uh, y- Obviously, you take these topics seriously, but it's not so over-the-top serious that you, it fails to be fun. And, and you even note that early in the book. You, you said something to the effect of, for some people, that spells, I don't take it seriously as, as needed. Uh, but you do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I always say to people, it's like, if I want... To clear a room, I know how to do that by just sharing uh, a few of the thousands of emails and stories that I've received and, and heard over the years. But if I want to, you know, have somebody be more curious and ask questions and be inquisitive, I, I treat it uh, like any other topic, you know, as humanly flawed as possible with a touch of humor and, you know, just dealing with it like, you know, humans do deal with these topics. And, you know, it, we sure do learn a whole heck of a lot more that way than trying to, you know, shove a a flashlight under one's chin to scare people. <laughs> well, as as we learn in this book, uh, this is not just an assignment or something for you. Uh, you've lived it. You've you've had a lifetime of weird experiences that sort of uh, led you on the path. Let's start with some of your experiences as a youngster, uh, yeah. the earliest memories of what you'd call a paranormal experience, because it leads directly to where you are now, right? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. I, I, the very, very, very first thing that uh, I recollected uh, came back to me as a teenager, um, and it, it, it related to a, a very peculiar topic. Um, I had to be about eh, six years old, and my younger sister, she was probably about five, four years old, and uh, my mother had sent us to go upstairs to get my brother for dinner. And, uh, you know, being, you know, pretty close in age, we were just kind of competing against each other, running up the stairs and trying to get there and uh, to my brother's room. 
when out of his bedroom came a robotic toy clown. And um, it was kind of cool. It was like, oh, cool. You know, we, we didn't have remote control back then. I'm like, oh, you know, it took a couple of steps to go play with this thing when I don't even know how to describe, but an absolute feeling of dread and horror came over us. And uh, we turned to run from this thing. And it's not like we were, it felt like we were moving in slow motion. We were moving in slow motion. And somehow my little sister got past me and started going down the stairs before I did. And I watched her lose consciousness as she tumbled down the stairs. And I lost consciousness at the top of the stairs. And it was just the strangest thing. I mean, my mother picked up my sister at the bottom of the stairs, didn't say anything, didn't ask us any questions. I woke up at the top of the stairs, I don't know how much time later. And it was as if it just never happened. We didn't speak of it until 10 years later. Plop, here's the memory again. I'm 16. I look to my sister, and I'm like, whoa, do you remember that robot toy clown that came after us when we were kids? And and she just looked up at me with such horror in her eyes, like, I thought that was a nightmare. <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm like, there's no way that we shared that same dream. I speak over there, and you draw what you saw, and I'll draw what I saw. And we both drew the same thing. And uh, the, the peculiar thing with this, this robotic toy clown thing, it was not touching the ground. Um, this is actually a story. I don't think I put this one in the Hat Man book. No, but, I don't remember uh, that. Yeah, not this one. <laughs> this is, I just wanted to creep you out, George. How about that? <laughs> uh, you have a line in the, early in the book. You say, I've been living in the nest of the paranormal world for nearly as long as I can recall. And then you explain that, from what you can tell, from all the descriptions, that you lived in what we would call a haunted house. Uh, yes. And you knew that early on. I mean, seven or so you were? Yes, I was seven. Um, this was a, a more direct memory that I had. Uh, <laughs> this was just lovely. And my mother had passed away uh, early in the year, in about April. And by Christmas time, my father had moved in, my future stepmother. And um, so we had already, this was Christmas morning, by the way, so we had already opened up all of our presents. We are sitting there playing with it, me and my siblings. And uh, myself, my two sisters, and my future stepbrother. And uh, my stepmother had this awesome organ that she had moved into the house. And so we're sitting there playing with our toys. And uh, my parents, uh, my stepmother, my dad, were going to go wish others uh, Merry Christmas, and they would be back. So we're just like, okay, you know, whatever. We're playing with our toys. We're having a good old time. When all of a sudden, <laughs> the organ started playing by itself and you know we're just like oh my gosh that is the coolest thing me and my sisters we get up and we look at this organ just pounding away and uh, we go to my stepbrother we're like that is so cool how does that do that and he is just like you know pale and just his jaw is open he's like it doesn't do that <laughs> and we, it's just it was so funny it was just like a moment out of a movie and we're just like it just had enough time to gasp and scream and run into the nearest room that had a lock on it, which was the bathroom, of course. <laughs> so we all piled in there. And uh, this organ, I mean, it wasn't like just, you know, playing a little here and there. It was pounding like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. It was just crazy. And <laughs> it was loud. And uh, I had kind of a, a, a bully of a sister who <laughs> was just... Oh, she was such a joy at times. And so we're all standing standing in the bathroom. This organ is going crazy, not too far outside of the, the bathroom door. When my sister goes, oh, it's too crowded in here. Somebody's got to get out. <laughs> and so I'm pushed out. I'm seven years, well, seven years old. I was eight years old at the time. The Coast Mobile <laughs> app is now available like, for no download way, on iPhones crying. and Android and, devices. Uh, you can become an insider like, I, directly this, through this, this really app. This is a great option for our track. international listeners, and new users will also house, receive right? I mean, a free yeah. two-week trial. Found. Like what? Like, give me oh. the laundry list. You know, well, that night, I mean, the organ started playing. My sister's new toy started playing. Uh, and I mean, they had no batteries. We had poundings. We had scratching in the walls. Um, there was one occasion when... Uh, <laughs> my stepbrother and my, my sister, they were hearing the poundings, and it was just coming, it just seemed to be coming from underneath the, the stairs, it seemed to be coming from the walls, and they're the only two home. And uh, 
they locked themselves in the bathroom, and my stepbrother got sick of it and just, you know, stepped out of the bathroom at some point and said, you know, I'm not afraid of you, you know, come and take me on type of thing, when something black with red eyes went into his face and, and scratched his face up, you know. So <laughs> my dad was convinced, you know, it must be a bat loose in the house, you know. There's no bat in the house. <laughs> I think perhaps they that may have been uh, the first, uh, face of shadow beings in my life. Um, I, I had not seen them at that time, but, you know, it's a strange thing. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, your mother must have been in a witchcraft or something like that. That's why, you know, after she passed away, the house became haunted. And I'm like, what mother do you know would haunt and haunt their children? <laughs> you know? It, did did so stuff odd. happen before she died in the house? The haunting did not. The uh, the clown incident turned out to be alien related, believe it or not. <laughs> we'll come back to that. But I mean, so there was weird stuff that happened in the house before your mother died. No, no, there no. was not. There was. Did not. your dad see this stuff? Any of these events that you described? Oh, he admitted many years later. <laughs> we were so upset with them. We're like, how could you leave us in that horror? You know, making us feel like we're alone and we're experiencing this stuff on our own. And he's like, are you kidding me? He's like, if I let you guys know how scared I was, you know, there's no way you kids would have stayed in the house. He your thought it was hilarious. We were just like, oh, my God, Dad, you no, know. Was your dad frightened by it at some point? Oh, Did he admit that later? Yes. Oh, yeah, he was. He absolutely was terrorized and terrified. He actually had the worst experiences, uh, one being uh, one time when he was laying in his bed and his bedroom door opened by itself. And uh, he said... It, he, he looked to see, you know, kind of leaned forward to see who was coming in the door, thought one, it was one of us, and his sheets on his bed rose up, and something very cold, he said, kind of draped itself right next to him, and he was absolutely paralyzed, not from being scared, but he was unable to move, and uh, he thinks he passed out from the horror of it all, because the next thing he knew, he's waking up, and, you know, it was all gone, so... I was like, "Wow, Dad, that's that's crazy." Um, we had what just yeah. What, what did you say to him years later? And you know, I, I can imagine at the time he was trying to calm everybody down, so he didn't give it much credence. But years later, he admits to it. To it. Well, um, my dad is is very he's very much a jokester, really laid back type of guy. And uh, so when he finally admitted to it, he admitted, you know, after we're grown up, he did not admit any other time prior to that. And uh, also brought forward a photograph that had uh, a ghost in it that did look like my mother uh, on Christmas Day when we started with uh, the haunting. But again, you know, I, I don't give uh, I don't give credit for you know this haunting as as being something that my mother created. I, I truly, in my heart, believe that this is. This is something that she was probably able to keep away. I mean, a mother's love, hello. I don't think there's anything more fierce and powerful in the world. Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, that is what helped keep this thing away. But when she left, it uh, it just, you know, opened up the, the gates, <laughs> you know, because tell me, it's been terrorizing me ever since. Tell us the story of the the attack of the killer spoons <laughs> uh, that happened in that house, because that was, it was entertaining and, and, uh, and informative. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this, this was just lovely. So um, because the house was so terrifying for me and my siblings, uh, we kind of made a pact among ourselves that, you know, we wouldn't allow each other to be in the house alone. So uh, <laughs> when I would come home from school, my older uh, sister would, would sit on the porch until I would get home, and then we would go into the house together. So uh, this one day I came home, and uh, she wasn't on the porch. So I'm thinking, oh, gee, really, you know, what a brave soul to go into the house. She must have really had to use the bathroom or something. I had no idea. Um, so I came into the door. I'm calling out her name. I'm taking off my book bag, and I'm, like, look, looking around for her. And I, I hear something in the kitchen and uh, just, like, a, a clanging uh, sound. I'm like, oh, maybe she got hungry or something, you know. And, and I'm still calling her name, and I'm walking to the kitchen door doorway, and, uh, the, the sounds of this clanging, of course, got louder as I came closer and closer to the kitchen. And I, uh, I mean, the, the horror of what I saw, it was only the clanging of silverware that I was hearing with no outright source. The 
the drawer that held I just get goosebumps saying <laughs> this this one. Uh-huh. The, the the drawer that that kept the uh the silverware was, was kind of vibrating and I saw it sliding open and I watched the silverware start to rise up. And I mean, uh, the best I could do right behind me was uh, the bathroom door, the the safety room, you know, to go into to lock the door. And I spun around and I went to the bathroom door and it was locked. I didn't know what was, you know, who was in there, why it was locked, no clue. Uh, But right in front of me were the staircase to the second floor bathroom and I just bolted up the stairs ran into the bathroom and locked the door and all the while I heard silverware clanging in the air behind me and I just and and I got into the bathroom I locked the door and I heard the silverware hitting the bathroom door as I was sitting in there and I mean I was absolutely petrified I there was no me getting close to to hear what was going on because I could hear it just fine. I'm like, no, 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 this is not happening. This is not happening. I think it was all of nine years old at the time, and uh, I I I was so just I, I just buried my face and and my my knees and just sat on the floor and just just waiting, you know, like this has just got to stop. And uh, and then I heard a noise in, in the house and I didn't know. You know what the heck? You know I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna move from the spot that I was in, and I, I thought I was hearing things. You know, and, and it was my dad calling my name, and, and I just I couldn't I just couldn't respond. And he comes up to the door and he's like, "Heidi, is, that, is are you in there?" And I'm like, "Dad, yeah, it's me." You know, and and he's like, you know, I opened up the door. I'm like so hesitant, and he's like, "Why didn't you respond?" And I was trying to tell him the, the silverware and, and everything that happened. And as I'm trying to explain to him, there was evidence behind him. There was a spoon on the floor behind him. And I'm like, "Look, look, there it is, there it is." And he's just you, like, "Really, really?" I think you wrote in the book you you weren't quite sure if it was really Dad that was outside the. Uh the bathroom door or somebody who's trying to pretend something sounding yeah. like dad to trick you into opening up yeah you know it, it honestly it's you, you question yourself i mean being a kid i mean it's like my gosh you know what <laughs> you just don't know what what's real anymore you really well, don't well you know kids have imaginations i can remember uh, some uh, shreds of memory back that far where you're you're thinking about some monster in the closet or the monster under the bed. You see things that may or may not be there. And, uh, you know, kids do uh, imagine a much more dangerous world than exists. You're saying that the things that were happening to your family are far outside the bounds of something like that. Oh, gosh, yeah. It, it, was, it was absolutely gut-wrenching and terrorizing and terrifying uh, what we experienced there. And uh, I, I it, it's hard to, you know counsel oneself <laughs> when you're a kid you feel unbelieved by your parents and so it was nice that I had my siblings to you know talk to in, in regard to what we're experiencing how we we're feeling and you know what was going on it, we just did not feel we didn't feel safe we really didn't feel safe and it, back then too it was funny because a movie just wasn't a movie unless it was a haunted movie a horror movie or something it, it, it just it was kind of therapeutic for us that even if it wasn't real that others knew of the possibilities of what some of us go through <laughs> so i mean it was just it was so bizarre for us but and for the longest time a movie just had to be a horror movie for me to to feel at ease isn't that strange well, yeah do you know since then you've been an investigator of these kinds of uh, par- uh phenomena and you've undoubtedly read articles about uh, the connection between kids and what you'd call poltergeist-type activity, speculation that maybe somehow it's a psychic, uh, something psychic that that kids in that age range generate themselves. What do you think about that? Oh, gosh, yeah, I've heard that, and uh, I've had people uh, suggest that potentially that's what I was up against. I was up against myself. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't always around <laughs> so when yeah. these things happen. So I, I don't think that that was something that I was experiencing at the time. Um, I do believe that some people have the ability to do odd things that uh, not necessarily are so directly understood. Um, I can say that I'm, I'm, I'm what some people might call an electric person. I have zapped many computers. <laughs> I have zapped uh, 
uh, typewriters, uh, uh, word processors, even, yeah. you know, back in the day. And it's like, oh, my gosh, it's it's frustrating. Uh, street lamps, uh, you name it. But thank God it's gotten better over the years where it hasn't been like that. So, And my dad being a computer tech came in handy, let me tell you. <laughs> Well, I can relate to that electrical thing, and I'll share some stories with you at some point, not on the air, about that. Heidi, this is sort of the point where it kind of gets serious for you and your sisters. You you all start having this basically the same kind of dreams in which your mom appears, but it's not really your mom, and it's uh, the vision is, is pretty frightening. And I can imagine at that age, it must have been incredibly frightening. Tell us what was happening in the dreams and how, what your reaction was when you realized your sisters were having the same dreams. Oh, gosh. Uh, absolutely just the, the strangest thing uh, happened. Uh, my parents, my stepmother and my father, I did not know this, but one of the reasons why we moved from our old house that was haunted um, was because uh, they didn't want to deal with the haunting anymore. So they literally built a brand new house so no one had ever lived in it before. Hmm. So <laughs> we moved out to the suburbs and... Uh, it was it was a relief. I mean, it was like a new beginning. And, you know, I mean, my siblings were like, oh, gosh, you don't have to deal with this dark menace anymore. And uh, this was about, I was about 10 years old at the time. And uh, almost immediately, we I started having the most horrific nightmares. And it was nothing pleasant. Um, I, I would you know, see my my mother, and and I'm like, oh, my gosh, Mom, it's so nice to see you. You know, I'm going towards her to go hug her, and, you know, I pull back only to see this this menacing thing with black eyes always, always trying to kill me, choke me, chase me. And it it was, I can't even describe that kind of a feeling. Um, It was evil. It was negative. It was not my mother. It was something masking uh, masquerading as my mother. And um, I dealt with this from the age of 10 for uh, probably 20 years, honestly. And uh, it, it, was, it was ongoing, ongoing. I was, uh, I was, about, mm, I was about 17 years old when uh, my, my, uh, one of my, my, my older sister, she called the house and uh, she'd already moved out and uh, she didn't sound good. I'm like, what's going on? You know, and, and She's like, I'm just not sleeping well. I'm like, well, you know, why? And she's like, you know, I've just, these nightmares, I can't take them anymore. I'm like, what? And like, you, you, what kind of nightmares, you know? And, and she said, it's mom. And she has black eyes. And I'm like, OMG. And probably a week earlier, my younger sister had told me the same thing. And I'm like, do you guys realize we are all dreaming the same dreams? I mean, some of them were verbatim. Others were not, but the same theme was, was consistent, and uh, I, I, I don't know why that was happening, what was going on, uh, but the, the feeling was one that, you know, it wasn't something that we wanted to talk about, because, you know, who wants to, you know, share that, you know, I have these dreams of moms killing me, you know, so we kept it to ourselves and uh, kind of dealt with it, but I, I didn't know what to do about it, and uh, I was happy when they dissipated, and this is this this is uh, I I am, I have got a big sense of humor, so I just I have to have a good time with this stuff. Otherwise, I think I'd go a little nuts. I got um, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me this: When did you first? How old were you when you started seeing these shadow people images? I mean, I'm sure you, that's not what you called them right off the bat, but eventually were to call them. You know, I was uh, I was about twenty, maybe nineteen, twenty years old. When I saw the first one following a friend of mine, um, I personally did not deal with these things uh, outright in, in my childhood. Thank God, um, I this 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 was just this is so peculiar and so strange. Um, it was broad daylight. Uh, I was living down in Iowa for a summer, and uh, my friend I, I was staying at her house. I was staying on the second floor in, a, in an attic like uh, that was partially done. And uh, she wanted to go to her uncle's house. We went to go walk over to her uncle's house. And, again, broad daylight, walking along this path that had some trees. And and I saw something out of my peripheral vision. And I'm like, what? You know, I saw this black shadowy thing go from a bush to a tree. And I'm like, I just didn't see that. So continue to walk along. And I saw it again. And it seemed to be following us 
all the way to her uncle's house. And I mean, I was just, I didn't even know what to think about what it was that I was seeing. So we get to her uncle's house. A little time later, we go to walk back to her house, and the darn thing followed us all the way back. And by that time when we reached her house, I was like just beside myself. And I'm like, look, I don't know what I'm seeing here, but I just saw the craziest thing following us. And I grabbed a piece of paper, and I drew what I call the head and shoulder shadow person, which is like this big, hulking, wide uh, creature that looks like uh, kind of like a man with its head directly connected to its shoulders, um, no neck to be seen, no legs, um, pretty pretty tall, maybe you know anywhere from eight to ten feet tall. And uh, I draw this thing, and I show it to my friend. I think you know she's totally gonna you know laugh at me or something. And so I show it to her, and she just looks at it and goes, "Oh, that thing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's been following me since I was a kid." hey, Dad, look, you know, Heidi saw the guy. And he goes, oh, is he back, huh? And I'm like, huh? You know, what's going on here? I mean, just just the craziest scenario for me. And uh, a short time later, I needed to go up to the second floor to get something for my room. Um, I did not turn the lights on because it, it was still daylight. And the, the first room that you go into, there are no windows, but uh, my room had the low, uh, low windows that, that had plenty of light coming in. So I... I could see just fine. I go in, I grab what I needed to, and I go to turn to get out of the room when this thing was standing there blocking my way out of the room. And <laughs> I, the, the fear that hits a person when you see such a thing, I, it, that's just out of uh, things that nightmares are made of. I, I, I was nearly paralyzed with fear and <laughs> this thing was literally hulking over me to the to the point of I just I felt like a, a strange thing to say that you could feel this thing wanted to rip my throat out if it could it, it hated me it hated that I saw it and uh, I got the message loud and clear and you know I don't know what came over me I don't know how I knew to do what I did but I knew if I ran, it was going to get me. I knew if I swung at this thing, it was going to get me. I mean, this thing was within touching distance. Um, and I just kind of took a deep breath and kind of just, you know, was saying a prayer to myself and just walked slowly through this thing <laughs> and steadily pacing myself to get to the stairs. And, I mean, that second room pitch black, and it's huge, and I just knew, just keep your pace, Heidi, just keep your pace, and I mean, I could feel this thing just breathing practically on my neck, and just following me all the way, um, I got to the top of the stairs, and it was as if my legs were just jello, like I just couldn't walk, and I kind of fumbled down and thudded at the bottom of the stairs, and uh, my friend, you know, heard me fumbling down the stairs, and comes out, and it's like, whoa, you know, what, what's going on here, Heidi? I'm like, and I could barely speak, and I'm like, it's upstairs, you know, so I could get out. And, I mean, I, this thing was upset. It was very upset. And um, I've now learned over the years that these shadow beings, they do not like to be seen, and they often will confront a person if you spot them out when they're not wanting to be spotted out. So um, this was a, a typical response of them. What about the idea that it's a function of peripheral vision or, you know, in some cases, you know, sleep paralysis has been used to explain all kinds of things away, uh, alien abductions and <laughs> and uh, poltergeists and things of that sort. Of. I'm sure at least some of those, uh, some cases uh, of what we would call paranormal, it can be explained that way. But you're you're talking about something else, right, for shadow people and for hat man. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know, the naysayers that say sleep paralysis this and sleep paralysis that, I'm like, it, you'll you'll have a chance to get your your turn with these things because I'm not saying that there's just a possibility you'll experience one of these things at some point. It's a threat that they will come at some point. So the naysayers will will change their tune at some point. So I'm not really that concerned about what they say. But uh, yeah, the these things they'll come in the daylight. They don't care. They prefer not to. They like to be hidden because if you can see your enemy coming 
you can protect yourself. But no, they come like a thief in the night uh, most often times, so they can have the upper hand. And it, it's it's a uh, it's such a low down dirty trick of a thing. You know, it's like you look if you're if you're as big and bad as you're, you're purporting to be, come to me as I am. You know, it, it's uh, it's not it's not something that they commonly do, unless they just they feel threatened. Um, I think they're often able to read, you know, a person and, and what they might do with what it is that they've seen and seeing these creatures. So, um, but no sleep paralysis, no way, not not. <laughs> Not these things, not with the glowing red eyes, leaning over, um, choking a person, slamming them up, up and down on the bed. No. <laughs> Since you've, you know, you've uh, talked about this publicly, written about shadow people, I think because of your radio show and appearing on Coast, uh, you've had so much input about shadow people. And we'll come back to that a little bit later as part of a litany of what you'd call paranormal experiences. But this also leads you to Hat Man. What, what's the first Hat Man sighting you had? And um, what did you think it was? What, did you think it was a shadow person the first time you saw it? Same thing? <laughs> you know, oddly enough, George, um, <laughs> I didn't experience seeing him personally until I started writing the book. Now, That's he's creepy. been seen behind me. He's been seen around me. He's been seen by family and friends, coworkers, you name it. Everything and everybody. But that man did not come my way. Um, my first encounter of a sort with him happened uh, with my college roommate, Samantha, and um, she and I shared an apartment, and my goodness, this girl, <laughs> often, it, we had so many odd things that went on in this apartment, it, it was just bizarre, and her way of dealing with most of it was screaming, <laughs> and it was always in the middle of the night, always like to the point where I'm like, come on, you know, just you know, deal with it, I'm dealing with it over here, you know, type of thing. But this one night, I was certain someone broke in and was murdering her. Um, she screamed like the death screams of the movies, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is what is going on? She screamed again, and I'm like, oh, you know, as long and as loud as she possibly could. And by that time, I'm like bolting. I'm like, oh, something's wrong, something's wrong. In her uh, her bedroom, there was a, a door that led out to, like, the patio. So uh, I, I was like, you know, somebody might have got in there. I don't know. So I run to her room. I bust open the door. I'm, like, you know, panting. I'm like, what, 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 what's going on? And, I mean, she is just pushed into the furthest corner that she possibly can be in and crouched, and she's pointing, and she's going, the man, the man. I'm like, what man, what man? You know, I'm running around. I'm like, Oh, my God, I'm making sure the door is locked. I'm, like, looking at the windows. I'm, like, you know, everything's secured. I'm, like, well, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And she's just, like, no, no, no. You know, when she finally could speak, she's, like, he disappeared when you came in. I'm, like, disappeared? I'm, like, oh, that's bizarre, you know. And she was a great artist, and um, she went on to draw what this man looked like, and she drew a three-piece suit, goatee on his uh a very pointed chin. Uh, he wore a trench coat, and he also had a, a gold chain watch on his hip and a flat gaucho hat, like kind of like Zorro's hat. And uh, I believe he had the black solid eyes uh, that she saw. And uh, I was just like, you know, but she was, you know, he was in the shadows. And, and I'm like, shadows? I'm like, oh, must be another form uh, these shadow people must take is what I'm assuming. I hadn't encountered him. And, you know, she kept telling me, you know, he was so real, Heidi. He was so real. He was right here. And I'm like, but I hadn't experienced him. I really didn't know what to think of him. And, uh, but upon, you know, kind of gathering the my my first book, The Secret War, and finally placing the different images of shadow people on my website, I had called this hat man, the hat man shadow, you know, just another form, because they could take on the form of uh, what I call the head and shoulder shadow, um, a shadow cloud, you know, shadow streak and whatnot, and I just assumed that's what he was, and almost immediately, though, when that image went up, the emails changed, the, the responses to his image alone was, was different, it, it was, I know this guy. You know, I've known him since I was a kid. 
he still visits me. I'm like, what? You know, it wasn't like I spotted this guy. It was, he talks to me. He knows me, you know. I, oh, I, I'd get chills just thinking about it. Your so. youngest sister, Keisha, very close to you, oh, yeah. uh, has an experience, and she draws a picture. I can only imagine the goosebumps she got when she shows you <laughs> this picture. Tell us that story. Oh, gosh. Uh, so I, <laughs> I, I was so excited. You know, I just got my... Uh, I got my website up of, of the different images, you know, because I finally put the images up once I got the Secret War book uh, published. I wrote the book in 97. I distributed it around to different authors and publishers and all over the place and uh, finally got it published in 01, um, though I think it got leaked a little bit here and there, but whatever. I, I was happy, and I, I'm like, you know, my sister comes over unexpected. Uh, Keisha does, and, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, i got to show you my new website. You know, I'm so excited. It's just like, Heidi, I need to talk to you about something. I'm like, okay, yeah, but look, 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 look. And she's like, yeah, but Heidi, something really weird happened to me. And I pull up my website. The Hatman uh, shadow guy pops up on my website, and she just shrieks, that's him, you know. She's pointing. I'm like, what? That's him? What are, you, what are you talking about? She's like, that's the guy. That's what I saw. And I'm like, you know, slow down, you know, I'm like, I, I wasn't piecing together what she was talking about. I just put this book out, and she just had this happen to her. I mean, literally, uh, probably days apart. Uh, I don't think that was a mistake. And uh, what she told me was, <laughs> this is, she doesn't like talking about it, but I, I just, I get tickled by, especially uh, my siblings, we've been tortured for so long with haunted stuff. We I find it hilarious. They get so scared a lot. But anyways, <laughs> but she she went to wash her her laundry and she went to go to get her clothes out of the out of the uh, the dryer. And uh, she told me I went to down the stairs and I'm at the the bottom step and I I didn't I didn't step all the way down. I look over to the dryer, which is pushed up against the wall, and she's like Heidi, this man with a hat comes, you know, leaning over from behind this, the, the, the dryer, and she's like, he was huge. And I'm like, she said, Heidi, I, I don't believe I touched the stair on the way up. She said she passed her daughter up, ran out screaming. Her daughter didn't know what was going on, uh, going on ran out following her screaming, too. And, uh, and I'm like, what? you know, what is going on? It's just so strange. And then she tells me, I think it was the next day or something, <laughs> she was sitting in her car, and she looked in her rear view mirror, and he was in the back seat, glowing red eyes. That's another form he likes to, he loves to show his red glowing eyes, which I don't understand. But uh, I think I think it's to get some respect or a fear, I don't know. But uh, she said she just stopped the car, jumped out, and danced around like this just did not happen to me. And still, at that time, I was not getting what he was exactly. I knew he was different. I knew that he was making a point of going after certain people and also letting people know that he was no shadow person. He wore the outfit that he did so you would recognize who he is, and uh, you know why do it? Why? Why? Why else? He could he could change in any form apparently, but no, he wants people to know that he's showing up everywhere worldwide. It doesn't matter your religion, your faith, where you're located. He can and he will show up, and uh, it's a disturbing pattern. And here she is back on coast to coast. Heidi, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. How are you guys doing? I'm doing fine. Everybody's good. I'm in St. Louis right now for another week or so, and then it's back to Los Angeles. But I see the hat man and uh, Holy Encounters and all these things still keep happening, don't they? Oh, George, it, it's an epidemic out there. I, I don't know what is going on, but the earth seems to be reflecting a lot of the negativity going out there as well as uh, these negative experiences that people are having. I, I don't know. It's it's like a sign of the times, and, and I'm yeah. kind of piecing it together like, you know, hold on, you know, everything just seems to be taking another level of just rottenness. And, you know, my heart goes out to the folks out in Vegas, truly, truly 
disappointing and, and sad. What creates, Heidi, in your opinion, this kind of evil that is out there? I mean, we're going to talk about the Hat Man in your subtitle of the that book is True Story of Evil Encounters. Why is there so much darn evil out there? You know, I, I, I keep beating myself over the head with the same question. And and the the thing that keeps coming to mind is, like, there has to be a yin and a yang, apparently. I, I don't get it. But I have this gut instinct that tells me that we don't have to accept the evil. We don't have to accept death, even. I mean, that there is something more out there that is on our side that we don't have to play victim to it. When you have talked about holy encounters before, exactly what do you mean by that? Holy encounters I kind of group into as being angelic and uh, Mother Mary and Jesus encounters. Uh, For myself, I, I really love the stories that go along with Jesus encounters because it's something that I personally experienced that I I I would have never expected or suspected it would happen to me because I was such a huge skeptic of such things. Um, I had honestly, in my first book, The Secret War, I bashed the thought that people were seeing Jesus and everything from a tree trunk to their bowl of soup. And I'm like, come on now. Uh, I'd seen some strange things and, 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 and some beings that I might, classify as being angelic even and but I knew it wasn't Jesus you know I'm like I think people were totally mistaken uh what they were witnessing as as Jesus just because of the white robe thing but um uh, yeah I just I really didn't believe in that and I took really great pride in picking on my friends who made an effort to go to church I I mean I believed in God I said my prayers <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I felt that Jesus was like a historical figure that had done his thing, and you know, thank you, and and it was done. And uh, I put in the Secret War book <clears throat> that if Jesus were around, I think I would have seen him by now. I I I, <laughs> I was really that skeptical. And wow, uh, yeah, I, I, almost I, um, almost blasphemy, Heidi. I know, I know, and. Uh, you know, just before getting that put out there, that um, that Secret War book, and, and I was like, you know, it took me two months to write that book and four years to get it published. So it was just like me reworking it a little bit sure. here and there while I was waiting on a publisher. And and uh, I had an encounter that blew my mind and changed my tune and caused me to have to rewrite parts of that book before it went out. What happened to um, you? Oh my gosh! Uh, so this was um, this was in this was July nineteenth, nineteen ninety nine, and I, I was a, I was a college student. I had a college roommate. I came home. I, I had a strange work schedule. I worked from five in the morning till twelve noon. I worked at a bakery. I'd go make the donuts. I'd go home and take a nap, and then go to class. <laughs> so I came home. It's broad daylight out. I told my roommate, you know, could you turn the TV down? I'm going to go take a, a power nap. And, uh, I mean, George, this is just the craziest thing. I go into my bedroom, and I go to lay down. And it was as if I fell through the bed and hit the ground. Jeez. And it was it was Like into bad. another dimension? Oh, my gosh, yes. I, I just, it was that physical. It was that, boom, where the heck am I? I mean, when I go to lay down, you know, you, you flap your pillow, you pull your blankets or whatever, turn the fan on because it was summer. I mean, I just, I, my head never touched that pillow. And I'm like, whoa, what the heck just happened here? I'm looking around. I'm laying on a cement ground. And I'm like pulling myself up. And I'm like, where the heck am I? I realize and recognize that I am on the porch of my parents' home. And I'm like, wow, how did I get here? You know, I'm, and I'm trying to, like, explain in my head, like, well, I, I guess I, I'm, I was planning to come and meet a family friend here, you know, later in the week. Maybe I, I came here. I just I was totally trying to play it out. And I look down. My parents live in the country, and there's this long driveway, and I see this man walking up the driveway. And I'm like, oh, I think that is the family friend. His name is Quincy. And I'm like, is that Quincy? I, I think that may be him. And I mean, just almost immediate, George, just like 
recognition like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> that is not Quincy. And I, I have a silly demeanor. That's just me. I'm a cartoonist. I can't help myself. Right. I put my face in my hands, and I'm like, this is not happening. Oh, my goodness. This man comes right up to me. And with the most friendliest voice, as if he was going to talk about the weather, mm-hmm. he's like, hello. I'm like, hello. <laughs> you know, I still have my face in my hands. And, and uh, he said, do you know who I am? If you knew who I was, you would not hesitate to say it. And I just, like, started to pull my hands away from my face, and I'm stuttering. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you're, you're, you're Jesus. And I don't speak Spanish. I don't know why I called him Jesus. And he said, yes, I am. And when wow. I looked... Did he man, look like the pictures we've seen depicted on paintings? You know, it, it kind of. I mean, I did not get to see his face. His his robes were, were, you know, a little off-white, and I could see shoulder-length hair, but literally, like, sunlight the, was... Well, the, robes, the robes covered his face? No, not the robes, but the, the sun was, like, behind his head, and it shadowed his face ah. tremendously. Yeah, and um, and I'm looking up, and I'm like, this is really happening. And he started talking. It was just so much about his life and what he aimed to do and how so much more needed to be done. And I am still me going, holy crap, this is going on. I'm touching the cement. Oh, you, you, said that to, you said that to Jesus? Just like in that? My head, oh. In my head. Well, he could be, in he my head. He could read your mind. You know that. <laughs> Yes, actually, because he called me out on it, essentially. By the way, and, Heidi, this is a family show, you know. So I know. Listen. I'm keeping it clean. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just, you know, just in a state of shock. And uh, I, I'm, like, totally not paying attention to everything he's telling me because I am just not understanding how I got there, why he's there. And uh, I guess he noticed, like, I, I, I wasn't paying attention, and he got silent. And that's when I pulled my attention. Oh, you know, at first off, I should say, I remember exclaiming in my head, like, why is the ground so close to me? And I exclaimed in my head, I'm on my knees. I don't remember going on my knees, you know. And and that's when he stopped talking. And then I, I felt like a kid being caught passing notes in class or something. And I look up to him and, and, uh, and I'm and I'm stuttering again. And I'm like, well, 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 well what do you want me to do? And... He kind of helped me stand up, and he said, first, you need to show us some things. And I'm like, who's us? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's talking about his father. I'm like, and uh, he started telling me, like, so much stuff. Like, it, it was it was almost like uh, things I knew I wasn't rem- uh, meant to remember, and it was just so much. And I could see see his mouth moving. It was interesting. It was like a, a pane of glass was between the two of us where my ears couldn't hear him, but my soul did. Now, this is not a dream? No, no. This was so incredible. This is it just just absolutely tremendous because it, it goes on where uh, I, he told me, it, I used to be painfully shy. I bet you'd never believe that, right, George? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> But I gave up grades in college. I was getting a medical degree, and uh, to give up any grades in college to, because I didn't want to speak in public to do presentations, I would just make sure I got straight A's and everything else. And uh, so <laughs> he told me, you know, don't worry what others think. Know that I'll be there to give you the words. And, you know, still to this day, before I even come on your show, or if I do my own shows, I look to the heavens and I'm like, you know, you promised me, you give me the words, now I'm holding you to it. Because I don't have anything to say for him. Yes, I I can do this stuff. Uh, Who would think that this paranormal lady, this is where she gets her strength from, but that is where I get my strength from. But um, to to fast forward a bit, this this is, it's just absolutely incredible. There's more to that story, what, what took place. But you're convinced it was, you're convinced it was a visitation. From Jesus. You know, the love that comes off from him, it, it's just so, you just can't describe it. Well, I guess it's I so, would call that a holy encounter. That is holy. It is truly holy. And you know, people say, how do you know it was him? And I'm like, I could have been blind and seen it was him because every cell in my body screamed his name, truly. Uh, I I went to wake up. Now, this is where it gets dark. You, you'll dig this. 
So I'm coming back to my body, and I feel my bed beneath me, and I'm like, the the love sensation that you get, you just don't want it to go away. So I am like not wanting to move. I'm like, this was so incredible when all of a sudden I felt as if I was being robbed of my ability to move. Huh. And I was, it's weird. I felt like my soul was ripped from my body. By? And by whom? And thrown into this very odd presence. I was in a similar rendition of where I was in front of my parents' home with a demon coming over my shoulder with solid black eyes, saying with a snake-like voice, are you sure of what you saw? And, I mean, I can't even tell you. I get chills every time. Like trying to trick you? Trying to get me to deny what it was I witnessed. And, you know, after going out to people and, and talking about what it was I experienced, I didn't know this, but... People said because you had that follow-up experience with this demonic presence that that really tells them that I did have a holy encounter experience because that's very typical. And sure enough, I have found that that is typical. People have an encounter with Jesus and something evil comes at them at some point. Mine was so immediate and uh, I, I, it, it was so just, just a horrific situation. So that was my first encounter. I... <laughs> woke up. I was I was a believer. My friends that know me, who I loved uh, teasing about going to church, they're like, you know, all I kept saying to people was, you know, Jesus is no joke. And that's why I named my book, Jesus is No Joke, because, uh, wow, changed my, my tune. And I got to see him uh, three more times that I put in the book. So four times total in that book, but I'd seen him uh, another time as well after that book was done. And it's my highest rated book. People don't realize uh, it was huh. number one on Amazon for eight months. Yeah, that's category. huge. That's huge. Yeah. Heidi. Yeah. I want to talk for about the hat time. man for a moment. Uh, in, yeah. Explain to a lot of people who don't know what the hat man is or who it is. Well, unfortunately, if they don't know, they will at some point. I, he is not just becoming a possibility. He's becoming a threat out there to everyone. Not to be listening. confused with Slender Man, right? Not to be, he is not Slender Man. I believe potentially the person that came up with that whole Slender Man thing may have experienced the Hat Man and kind of put a, a fictional twist on right. it. Right, right, um, I think so too. Hat Man is essentially a, 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 a being. He is not a shadow person. I made the mistake. I came on your show and I call him Hat Man Shadow. He yep. is a being. He is very solid. He's very real. Yes, he could look so much, uh, somewhat like a, a shadow, but... He wears a suit, three-piece suit, uh, trench coat or cape, uh, a gaucho-type hat, a fedora-type hat, a cowboy hat, I've even heard. Uh, how about one of those uh, chimney-type hats? Hat. Yes, the top hat as well. And, uh, you know, sometimes he's clean-shaven if people get to see his skin or it's not. He's very pale, solid black eyes sometimes, but usually glowing red eyes, absolutely intimidating. And he is not small. This guy, when he steps into the room, he usually has to bend over for his back to kind of press up against the top of the ceiling. He is a big guy. Why do I Sometimes, picture Abraham Lincoln when you mention the hat man? Yeah. You know, a lot of people kind of see that that type of entity. And, you know, something is, is a little strange out there, and this is kind of newer uh, that I've not put out there. But when he has a cape on, he usually has a top hat on. And he also tends to show his teeth. Some people call this the grinning man or the smiling man. Huh. And Do you I'm see like, his features on his face? Yeah, yeah, people do. But they he can see, also be can, shadowed as well. All right, but you could see his eyes and nose and all that. Yeah, a lot of people do. Not always, but a lot of people do. All right. And, uh, but the, the, same, the same feeling is there of absolute dread and horror and looking into the eyes of something that is the most evil on high. And, you know, coming upon that, that Slender Man story, <laughs> that that story is, is so, you know, I get asked about it so often, and I'm trying to find my dates here on something because this is an interesting fact when it comes to the Slender Man. Um, okay, and Slender okay. Man was a but, creation, right, of a person? Who just started writing about it? 
Ex- ex- yes, honestly. So it was a it was a uh, a competition that it's like a modern day boogeyman type of thing that was put out there. It was a Photoshop contest uh, by Eric Knudsen, uh, June tenth, two thousand and nine. He created it for that contest. Now, this is an interesting fact. Now, I published my book on Hatman, May 12th, 2014. Okay. The, the attack that those, those three little girls, two little girls attacked another child, mm-hmm. and she survived, that happened May 31st of 2014, about a 20-minute drive from where I grew up. What's the significance of that? You know what? A hat man Literally, influence, you think? The hat man is so responsive. Tell us some of these evil encounters. What's so evil about the hat man, Heidi? Well, yeah, I, I wanted to finish up really quick with uh, how responsive the hat man is because he came 15 minutes after speaking of him, and the sightings of him have increased so much, and so have the sightings of Jesus. So Jesus encounters, hat man encounters, it's like, Whatever side of the fence you're on, it seems that they are showing up to that person. But I've also had many people write me who have experienced both Jesus encounters and Hat Man. So fence sitters, beware. Um, yeah, as far as some of the, the more interesting stories, you'll find this one pretty pretty cool. Um, I, had a, I had a lady write me telling me how she had personally experienced the Hat Man many times for many years. And it was something that was just a part of her life. And mm-hmm. this was pretty common, actually. And uh, it, it started getting rather intense, especially when her and her boyfriend were, were fighting quite a bit. And eventually they broke up. The boyfriend moved out. She met another guy, became engaged. Now, the ex-boyfriend started experiencing the hat man. And he was so distraught that he started calling her pretty regularly saying, you know, did you send him? Why is this going on? What's happening? And she would always tell him, I told you he shows up when there's negativity going on. And they literally bonded over this occurrence. She ended up breaking up with her fiancé, and the no. ex-boyfriend came back into her life. I am not kidding. It is just absolutely, uh, I mean, the things. I mean, so Hatman is bringing people together on, in odd ways. Um <laughs> Well, where where does the evil in the hat man come from? You know, I'll tell you, this is something that a lot of people are, are, are fighting for themselves, and that I've seen the pattern over the thousands of emails that I've, I've gotten, is hat man is looking to control the person and their gifts. It's as if he waits around trying to find what is the the thing that makes them special to be able to see him so well, first of all, and to be able to tolerate his presence. And so he tries to break them down and to put them essentially hovering in a corner, and and then he asks them to work for him. And this pattern of him doing that, breaking people down, getting them to... uh, essentially isolate themselves and, and feel powerless it, and then giving people these these instructions through dreams. He loves to come to people in dreams and showing them what he needs of them. Now, I had a, a very interesting story that was sent to me that I just mind boggling. Uh, this gentleman was in his basement and uh, all of a sudden, and Hatman loves to do this. He comes and he shows up out of nowhere big and tall, and he's like, he, what on earth, and who is this man? And, and Hatman drew his attention to his wall and pointed at the wall. And he said the wall became this scene out on the ocean. And it was like having a, a huge storm, and he saw this boat out on the ocean. And a man, obviously the captain, steps out from the, the cabinet, and he's looking out at them. And the ship starts to go down and sink into the water. And the man is, of course, that's watching this is freaked out. And then the hat man turns to him and said, such a man would do this for me. So he's asking people Hmm. to give their lives to him. And uh, I had a a coworker that came uh, to me once in private. 
uh, this was, uh, many years ago, talking to me about uh, how they had experienced this hat man over in the Philippines. And I'm like, well, you know, and this is another common, very common thing that a lot of people may not often hear. Him being around instances of death. She knew her father was dying. Her and her family were staying outside of the room and, and waiting and, and trying to make sure he was comfortable and, and everything when they heard the door open and the hat man walked out and walked through the wall. I don't understand him opening up a door just to walk through a wall, hmm. but almost as if to let people know, it, look, this is this is me, and he wants to be recognized. He really wants to be recognized, because otherwise he could come as any other form, any other shape. But he comes as he is for a reason. But uh, so they ran in and they found that her father had passed away. And I had a, I'd spoken to a near death experiencer um, uh, author on, on my show, and um, you know everything's always love and light with near death experience authors, especially. And I'm like, come on now, everybody's not getting the love and light. I, I mean, there's too much evil that I I get emails about to know that it's not all fluffy. And uh, and I, she was honest with me. She's like, well, yeah, there is this this really strange phenomenon. The people that don't have those positive near death experiences, they see this strange man in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> she had not heard of my work on the Hat Man, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Do I'm people, like, Heidi? Do people report seeing red beady eyes on this thing? They're not beady. They're they're. Solid. They're normal size eyes, and they're solid, glowing red. Yes, that is very common with him, and um, very piercing, very telling, very paralyzing. And you know, this is strange. So I used to attribute Hatman to being, I don't know, like he didn't want to get a suit wrinkled or something. He would send in his his baddies, his thugs, to rough people up. Generally, who and, were they? Uh, were they other hat people? Oh, no, shadow people, shadow beings, um, the ones that look like uh, shadow spiders, head and shoulder shadows, um, any any shape or form, uh, cloudy shadows. And he would send those in, or the Grim Reaper-looking being. That one is very common. And the old hag oh, yeah. has been We've seen heard. next to Hat Man. So he'll direct them to do the dirty work. But Hatman's been getting his hands dirtier lately. He's really liking to dig in and slap people around and beat them up. Um, I had a, an email that was sent to me in regards to uh, this this gentleman. He'd experienced Hatman for many years. And it scared him, but he didn't feel really threatened because Hatman never did anything, honestly, that was it would make him run and hide from this guy. One evening, he fell asleep on his couch, and Hatman came and started pressing him so far and so hard into the couch, he literally could not breathe hmm. and was just about to pass out. When Hatman started taking him by his throat and his chest and throwing him up and down on the couch violently. Does Hatman ever try to kill somebody or hurt somebody? I, I believe so. Uh, I, I I don't I can't recall if I shared this one story where he'll if he doesn't try to harm someone or have one of his baddies or thugs do it, he'll encourage a person to kill themselves and uh, to kill themselves to kill themselves. This is this, oh my gosh! It, I I'm, I'm a therapist and I had a student working under me and um, you know the whispers oh that's a lady that writes the odd books and <laughs> <laughs> and see. It's you, just, it's you've been coined already, right? Yeah, it's whatever. I have a good time with this stuff. And um, and she's like, what kinds of books? And I said, oh, and these odd things. And I mentioned Hat Man. And she turned ghost white. And she said, I've never told anybody this. She said, I was about three years old. I saw the outlet and there was a fork laying on the floor. I looked at the fork. I looked at the, the outlet. And I knew my mom said never to put anything in those things. Just said, and all of a sudden, uh, an extremely tall man, so tall he had to bend over, hunched, and he came all the way down within mere inches of her face and said, "Go ahead, stick it in." I mean, encouraging a three-year-old to kill herself? 
I mean, what's his limit? That's pure evil. That is that pure is, evil. That is the worst. And it's like, how many people has he killed? Who survived to tell the story? You know, and uh, I've had many, and this is, this is an unspoken thing that a lot of people, women especially, but also men, who will let me know that Hatman has sexually violated them. And it's it's one of the, the most demeaning things that I think that uh, people don't like to address. And I, I understand they'll try to focus on this, this, or that, but they kind of hint to him getting a little bit too close and too uh, personal. And, in uh, in your opinion, like, what is the hat man? Is it is it an entity? Is it It's not physical. So w- where does it come from? Where, where does it hail from? That's the thing. He is very physical. I, he is seen in broad daylight walking. At, like a, like a person? He is like a person. He will step into the shadows where it's like he almost blends, but he's got distinctive edges. He's not like a shadow person where it's a little blurred, a little out of focus. He is very solid. He could step from those shadows. And as in one instance, he stole this gentleman's uh, replica of Freddy Krueger's hat. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> and, 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 and wore it? Yeah. Yes, he did. They never found the hat again, and he was highly disturbed the rest of his life. He and his brother would see this this thing come out of the closet, this man come out of the closet. He didn't have a hat at the time, and when you think about it, Freddy Krueger kind of wears the hat man's hat. Do they all and, have red eyes? Uh, not 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 always. Um, sometimes if, if his skin is seen, you'll see just solid black uh, eyes, but um, yeah, but his, his red eyes are, are pretty distinctive most times, and uh, I think that he likes to instill that fear. He he's aiming for a respectful fear. I I don't I, I had this experience just before I put out my book on him. Now at the time I'd never I I won't look at him. I will not look at him. But he will try his best. He has been behind me. I've had patients scream. <laughs> well, what happens if you look at him? It, well, you it's, turn it's to salt paralyzing. or what? It's a paralyzing fear. I think his eyes are kind of a, a hypnotizing type of uh, a way of, of getting control over someone. And he would definitely get respectful fear out of anyone who looks at him. And I knew he had stepped in my room this night. And I I was curious. Like, what? how dare he have the nerve to come to my room? Because I, I don't put up with any of that. And I waited. I wouldn't open my, open my eyes to look at him. And so he sat on my bed, and he waited some more. And I'm like, what? You know, come on. You know, what? what is this, a standoff? And then, I am not kidding you, George, he stretched out across the base of my bed, and I could feel him prop his head on his elbow as if to wait for me to look at him. And, you know, I tell people to break that to get rid of them, the more immediate is to say the name of Jesus. And I had waited too long, apparently, George, because I started to speak and I couldn't. I was paralyzed. And uh, it took great force for me to finally utter the words, and then, boom, he was gone. And the imprint was left on my bed. So I know he was there. And uh, this was just before putting the book out. And that's, you know, right after that, I, I had the the encounter at my job my it was he was going after my patients are they all and, evil the hat man oh yeah oh yes it, it's no like, good ones in the bunch huh oh gosh no it, you know some people feel that he may be a guardian just because they're not afraid i'm like well good for you but uh don't get too comfortable with him because once you let your guard down that's when he'll make his mark and he may literally make his mark by he likes to bite scratch punch. Um, does he you know, does he try to kill? I believe he does. I, I've had oh, uh, I had one gentleman tell me how he was drugged out into the the trash cans and was flung through the air and smashed into him and just like fighting for his life and Hatman was levitated off the ground and just punching wildly, just just an all out brawl. Uh, I, I believe he has tried to kill people on one too many occasions. Why have you uh, been so fortunate, Heidi, that you haven't (laughs) really been attacked yet? You know, this is one of the things that I... Do you have like a barrier up around you or something? 
I don't let my guard down. And and that's one of the things is I in in my book, The Hat Man, I try to tell people how they can get rid of him and keep him away. Uh that's something that I had to learn as far as shadow people and the hat man and negative aliens on top of it, who all work together, mind you. Uh I mentioned that in the book too, a couple of experiences that people have had. But yeah, I I, I protect my home, I protect myself. You won't see me without a cross around my neck. Because uh, it, it's what I use to bless my home and to bless myself in order to stay protected. I, I, and you know, having had the Jesus encounters that I mentioned, that I would not be able to do what I'm doing had I not had those ex- experiences with Jesus. I really would not. I didn't know that I needed to have that. But I, you know, people tell me, oh, you know, how do I get rid of this hat man? Oh, but I don't believe in that religious stuff. So what do I do? And I'm like, well, then throw a shoe at it because. Huh. It's, You really need your faith to do that. And that's why I'm putting out a book any day, actually, called The Other F Word for Faith. So people, I keep getting so many people that say they don't know what to do. They don't believe in this or that because, you know, whatever static is is going on in their faith. So I'm like, well, gosh, you know, how can you break people down to realize you're looking into the eyes of pure evil. You better hope there's an opposite force out there. You're pretty spiritual, aren't you? I, I I feel like I cheated in my spirituality because of the Jesus encounters. I was not beforehand. I don't go to church. I'm not a Bible thumper. But Jesus came and you know shook so me. So you're up not you're not bit. you're not religious, but you're spiritual. I'm Christian. <laughs> I'm Christian. I don't go to church, uh, but I'm very Christian. People will say spiritual as if they're afraid to say Christian. I I'm Christian, and uh, I, I'm not ashamed to say it because I I would not have my sanity or my soul, I think, or be able to talk on this stuff and help the many thousands who have written me over the years if I didn't have those encounters. And, you know, George, I'm, I'm going to have to, at some point, come <laughs> come forward about some of the, the healings that I've had from Jesus encounters. And it, it, if I wasn't a believer then, I mean, I, I've, I've had way too much luck going on mm-hmm. Jesus is something else. And, and the healings are, are done on you or other people on myself I I just I, it's, it'll be another book I'll save it for then give some of the folks that aren't familiar with first of all shadow people a definition of what we're talking about when it comes to shadow people I define them as something dark uh, that can essentially shapeshift into a variety of, of things from shadow rodents something that you've seen mm-hmm. uh, Shadow cat, shadow cloud, shadow streaks, uh, something I call head and shoulder shadow beings. Um, These things can range from uh, something rather short to, but usually pretty large, over six feet tall, and it looks almost like a person with its head directly connected to its shoulders. And if you get a really good look at them, sometimes you'll see glowing red eyes. And uh, these things favorite. I guess you could say pastime, a hobby is laying on people, paralyzing them, choking them until they essentially give up on life, and that's when they pretty much make their exit. Um, a lot of people will refer to it as sleep paralysis. I I don't buy into that, that people are hallucinating these things, because way too many people in way too many countries around the globe are experiencing those beings in particular, and... Um, and then, there, of course, there's a hat man mm-hmm. who is ten times worse. <laughs> um, he is a guy that... Oh, and, and just to be... Clear, and not to be confused with some shadow people that right. have hats, right? It, 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 well, yeah. Well, shadow people, I, I, those, those things are never been a person. I, I think there's some confusion out there that these are the shadows of ghosts or something. I'm not talking about... Uh, uh, poorly formed ghosts or, or, or anything like that. I'm talking about things that are not quite human. And the hat man, he is a guy that usually wears a suit, three-piece suit, uh, trench coat, sometimes a cape, a gaucho hat, top hat. Um, he can be seen with solid black eyes. If you see the skin of him, he has solid black eyes. Uh, and other times, People just see a solid black mass, but very solid. And uh, God forbid, if you see his eyes, when you see them black solid, they're usually glowing red. So really gross, really disgusting. And if he dares smile 
it usually goes from ear to ear like the Joker. It is something you'll never forget. Very jagged, very much like the clown it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how they describe them. And, um, and the same kind of fear. Like when, when you watch that movie and you, you imagine being one of the characters in the film, it's like it's that kind of reaction that most people get. I do get a handful of people, but very few, who don't feel any fear, so they think, well, maybe he's okay. And, like, then invite him over to, <laughs> to your house, you know. But uh, not, no thank you for myself. But, yeah, it, he's um, it, sometimes people have seen him with a, with a watch on his hip. Um, the old hag is seen with him. Huh. Uh, the do, they, do they get dimension and shape from the hat man? Oh, yeah, totally. Like, he is a solid something or other, some, a person almost, but with such evil intentions, there's no mistaking his presence. Now, is he more evil than a shadow person? Oh, yes. Uh, I, it, he is known to be quite chatty for some people. Uh, sometimes he just likes to growl or mutter your name, but it's really a deep, guttural voice. Um, he directs shadow people. I, only a few times have I ever gotten emails that describe there being more than one hat man, but there, there generally seems to be one central hat man if there are other shadow beings uh, seen with him. So some, sometimes people, because when I first came out with the topic of the hat man, I call him the hat man shadow, because I thought, oh, he was just another form that these shadow people took, but this guy took on a whole other life of his own and was found to be directing shadow beings, these shadow clouds, shadow cats, whatever, and the old hag, and this grim reaper-looking like creature that uh, pops up pretty often, actually, as of late. And I mean, just very typical grim reaper with the bony fingers, a sickle sometimes in his hands. And, you know, something that's really interesting that's been coming up with the hat man lately uh, this is just so bizarre because usually he's seen with his hands in his pocket. In his pocket? I just like what walking around in his pocket? With his hands in his pockets. Like, that's that's common. That's something I've gotten for years. But lately I've been getting a lot of people saying, my goodness, when he pulls his hands out of his pockets, he's got these enormous claws for fingers. And um, I've gotten some of those here and there, but more lately that he is – very grabby with those claw-like hands and um, really disturbing for some people. And, cool. and, and when he pulls them out, it's generally to uh, get very physical where, where the people are fighting him because he is being so grabby. What got you involved in investigating Shadow People and the Hat Man originally anyway? Uh, well, I always related Shadow People and the Hat Man to uh, the alien phenomena because that's the angle that I came at it uh, from. You um, thought they were ETs originally? Well, I was experiencing aliens in, in my apartment, my shared apartment with my college roommate, mm -hmm. and um, we would see these kind of see-through, like, gray beings. We, I, I never felt like I was abducted. I'd seen a lot of UFOs, and one night I, I had quite a few grays that came at me, and... Um, I, I never was paralyzed. I got up. I'm, I'm like walking around like I thought I was invaded by four-year-olds until I got a good look at them. It, it was just the strangest thing. And, and essentially the next day, I, my place became flooded with shadow beings. And um, I had seen them once before when they were following a friend of mine, uh, maybe two years prior or so. And um, I was really amazed to see this thing in broad daylight, a big black shadowy mass. It was this head and shoulder kind of shadow. And by the way, you could spot that, uh, the different types that I'm referring to on my website, HeidiHollis.com, and just click on the shadow people tab. And this thing was following myself and, and, and my friend, and, and I'm like just beside myself, and I draw this picture, and I'm like, I don't know what I just saw, but I saw this thing following us, and I thought she was going to laugh at me, and she takes a look at it and just goes, oh, <laughs> That guy, oh, man, you know, I can't believe this. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And she goes to her dad, look, Heidi's seen him too. And his da her dad goes, is he back? And I'm like, you know, <laughs> slow down. What, what are you talking about? And they're like, 
we don't know. This thing has been, like, hovering in her room and harassing her since she was a kid. And the dad had walked in on it many times when she was screaming in the middle of the night. So here this thing that I'd spotted, and it confronted me at that time, too. It, it, after I mentioned it to my friend, I go. I was staying at, at, her, at her family's house, and I go to my room, and, and this big, I mean, it's probably, I don't know, 10 feet tall, it's huge, just hulking over me like it wanted to kill me because I spoke of it. Like, these shadow beings in particular really don't like to be found out. They hide in the shadows for a reason. And, um, I mean, it's clear to, to realize, you know, why does an enemy hide so they can mm-hmm. get upper hand and taking advantage of you? And if you could spot them or point it out to, to other people, they, they, they will get their way with you. And um, so, yeah, it, it, was, it was really strange to have it come back at me after getting rid of these little gray creatures that were in my apartment. And um, I'm like, what is, what is this connection? I, I could not figure out what on earth was going on. And in looking through everything that I could find as far as the paranormal or UFOs are concerned, I couldn't find anything on this topic. And I had described, I, I belonged to a UFO and alien abductee group. Okay. I had only seen UFOs. I hadn't been abducted. And I honestly thought these little grays, you know, I remember going to the, these meetings and all these people are talking about being abducted by them. I figured they must have wanted to check me out and came into my apartment. I had no idea why they came at me because I I had not experienced them before. So it was really a strange thing. And then to have this this whole (laughs) shadow people thing pop up, and I would describe these creatures to the people at the group, and and I just started calling them shadow people because it kind of defined to me what they kind of look like people, and they were shadowy, and, and that was just something that stuck. So my looking into what I was experiencing, there was nothing out there. And I'm like, well, uh, I, I felt it was important to put word out there, especially after uh, some of my encounters uh, with my myself and my college roommate changed to involve a positive, uh, benevolent, I guess you could say, alien being that indicated to us that these shadow beings were a nuisance to more than just this planet, that they are darkness. You could call them whatever you want. Um, they're kind of related to what has been spoken of for centuries in the Bible and religious text as being demonic. But they, they refer to them as being something that was not from here and taking over different species and whatnot is what they do. Who and conjures them up, have... Heidi? Do we conjure them up or do they just pop up on their own? You know, we can attract them. We really can. I mean, crack open your Ouija board, uh, sit there and play with some tarot. Um, they love that stuff. Uh, <laughs> anything negative, it, essentially, they like to feed upon illness or they cause these problems, too. A lot of people will move into a place and they're like, gosh, I just, you know, we kept arguing every day, didn't know what was going on. And, and then we started seeing this shadowy thing whisking by whenever we started arguing. And it was like, it was inciting the negativity. It was feeding off the, the negativity. It was, it was creating and feeding at the same time. And I have personally found that behind uh, most hauntings, <laughs> there seems to be a shadow being lingering about. And um, that's actually something I, I wrote about uh, when I wrote my first book on shadow people in 97, uh, called The Secret War. And um, it, it's just so crazy to think, you know, I hear I was a college student putting this thing out, and I'm like, I, I really, I, I put it out in hopes it could help open up some eyes, but I had no idea after joining you on this show that the momentum of oh, experiences. I, when I came on your show, I had no idea others had experienced it at that time. And I have been slammed with thousands of emails from around the globe ever since. Thanks to you, George. <laughs> Heidi, what about the Slender Man? Where does he fit into the scheme here? Oh, wow. Slender Man, he is something else. Um, huh. That is, I learned that Eric Knudsen, the, the creator of the fictional character Slender Man, um, he was inspired by these reports of what I named the Hat Man. <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm like, yeah, it looks very similar. And the tentacles, I speak of shadow spiders. My number one encounters uh, that I personally had were shadow spiders. And, and here comes this fictional character 
of uh, this hat man with tentacles coming out of him. And I'm like, gosh, it looks a whole lot like the hat man. And the feel and how he goes after kids and, and all of that. And two weeks after I put out my book on the hat man, like I, I'd never personally had a hat man encounter until I was just about to put that book out. He came at me personally in my own place came at, I'm a practicing therapist, came at one of my patients twice in front of a, a group of other therapists, and I'm like, wow, he's taking this really personal, and I'm putting this book out there that this guy is showing up, and two weeks after I put out that book, The Hat Man, oh, t- very, probably within a 15-minute drive or so from my, my family's home and where all my family generally lives in Wisconsin, is when is where those uh, little girls attacked their friend in the name of oh Clinton. that's right that's right and and I took it I took it as a as a nod like right in my neighborhood R- really you know just to show his power because I believe that those little girls that one of them um, said that she uh, had seen like she she was convinced by the other girl that he was real because she had seen him when she was little quote little. And I'm like, I bet she saw the hat man. I mean, how else? And and if these little girls had experienced anything like that, where would they go? Creepy pasta, because that's popular with kids. And go, there he is, that's the guy. Um, so I, I really think that it's a hat man that people have been seeing. And, and I know that uh, my, my friend uh, Nick Redford, that he'd mm-hmm. written a book on Slender Man and how people are actually conjuring this up, and it's become a thing now. And I'm like, you know, hat man is is very tricky. Uh, the devil is known to be very tricky. Demons are known to be very tricky. So he might be playing upon it a little bit to confuse people out there, but um, I, I really think it's him. I really do. What does that tell you about uh, what's going on uh, with these demons and the evil that's associated with this stuff? Oh, my God. It, it's getting so bad out there, George. I this is why I, I put in so much of my time and effort into this. I, I could sit back and be comfortable as a therapist and never worry about a thing. But this is really, it's scary. It is really scary. The efforts, the efforts that are being put into what, what people are experiencing with the hat man in particular. Like, oh gosh, 90, 99% of my emails are about him, not just basic shadow people. Oh, no, the boss is rolling in all the time now. He is on a mission, and um, he's stepping it up and, and getting quite active, very, very physical, very physical. And um, the the emails that I've gotten more recently, I mean, wrestling with this guy, wrestling with him. I mean, wide awake, people, two people in a room fighting him. I mean, wow, how desperate does he have to be? And, and I think that uh, that's a sign of the times, that the time is short. He's, he can't hide in the, the shadows. And, and, you know, Hatman likes to be recognized, and he likes the fear that people give to him. Shadow people, they'll see, they'll see that you see them, and they may actually con- you know, run you over or charge at you because they want to essentially shut you up. <laughs> but uh, Hatman will sit there and wait till you wake up, get a good look at him and smile and laugh at you. And he wants to be recognized. He wears the same outfits for a reason to let people know, I'm everywhere. I am I, I am the guy <laughs> that you fear the most. So really, really something. Has anybody ever been hurt by a shadow person? Oh, I believe so. I believe so. Um, I've had people that have physically punched at these things, been scratched, back, bitten, um, choked into near unconsciousness. I mean, I haven't heard from the people that didn't survive it uh, because they're on the other side, sadly. But it, it's it's gotten to be uh, something to be weary of, and, and I'm less I'm less weary of shadow people. I'm I'm more afraid if a hat man is coming around and visiting really? you. Oh, but, yeah. but but and again though, how do we distinguish the difference mm-hmm. between a shadow person who may have a hat on and the hat person? Well, if he's got a hat on, more than likely it is the hat man. Okay, all right, if that's where you're coming from then. Yes, yeah. If it's got a hat on, and now hat man doesn't always wear a hat either, um, but he is a he's distinctly a guy. 
but I have heard of these more shadowy, less uh, definitive-looking things that have a hat on. I'm like, ah, it's probably Hat Man. He just wasn't fully uh, developed. (laughs) But uh, he'll step out of the shadows and be very solid and in your face. Heidi, some of the reports of the shadow person, he's been in kind of like an 1800s garb, that kind of clothes. Do you pick that up? I do. I get a lot of that. Um, But also this, uh, he changes it. He'll wear a bowler's hat sometimes. Or uh, uh, I've even heard um, of a shorter, like, top hat. And, um, of course, the gaucho hat is the more more popular one. Oh, and a cowboy hat. That one is pretty rare, but that happens as well. The cowboy hat. A cowboy hat. And it doesn't seem to matter what part of the country. But, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not as common. And then there's, of course, there being no hat on his head. And, and I think I was on your show once, and I told you about uh, a couple of uh, brothers who, uh, one of the brothers, they, li- they slept in a bunk bed and, and he would always, every night, see this guy come out of their closet and reach for something. And But he would always wake up and scream, and this, the guy with this hat man, or, or he didn't have a hat at the time, he would jump back in the closet. And one time he got what he was reaching for, and it was his brother's replica of Freddy Krueger's hat from <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. And he, he stole it. The hat man stole the it. The hat man stole the hat. It. Yep, he stole the hat. And get this, George, I learned that uh, Freddy Krueger was inspired by, hello, the hat man. That's right, exactly. What's the motivation of a shadow person or the hat man? What do they want? You know, I get that a lot. It's like, why me? Why would this happen? And, you know, I find that if these things weren't invited somehow by participating in something uh, cultish, uh, like Ouija boards and, and, and things like that, uh, it's quite innocent. Sometimes it's a dream where they, they saw somebody at their door, they opened it, they knew it wasn't the person they thought it was, they opened it anyways, and, and it's, it's kind of symbolic for allowing this thing at them. But more often than not, I find that um, Hat Man or these shadow beings, they want to control the potential future or possibilities of this person. And when they put a lot of effort into them, I really, really think that person must have a special insight or gifts where they can spot these shadow beings or the hat man at any random time and uh, warn others to, to prepare for this thing coming at them or, or whatever it is. But um, also the, the feeding upon these people and recruiting them to do their bidding. It sounds so cliche. It's like, oh, the devil made me do it, pulling my strings. Huh. But he really does. He really does try to do that. He, I, oh my gosh, I get so many of, uh, wow, there was, this guy was whispering in my ear to, to kill somebody or kill myself and how to do it. And I mean, just horrible things. So it's, it's just, um, it, it's the old fashioned demonic thing take over to add, the, add you to their army of minions to do their bidding. It's so, uh, it seems so basic, but it's really horrific if you're the one that's in the sights of these things. Technologically speaking, a lot of people will see the shadow person, for example, Mm -hmm. as a shadow, but isn't their room dark? It's nighttime. How do you see a shadow when your room's dark? Yet people are seeing that. Yeah, they say darker than dark. You know, when you open up your eyes at night and they adjust and you can kind of make out something, a little moonlight. A little light, maybe a nightlight or something. Yeah, even yeah, but I, I grew up in the country. The the moonlight, I could I could see with that. But yeah, the the people like say open your eyes and you see one corner of the room. You feel somebody staring at you from it, and it's really dark. And then they see that real darkness move. Then they know something's up. And um, it could be the shadow spiders, shadow clouds, or or Hat Man sitting in it. But usually Hat Man. He doesn't mind if you get a good look, like I mentioned before. So he might step out of those shadows and really freak you out. Interesting take. This is, <laughs> yeah, you really... really. And, you know, this new book that I, I put out, because I'm a cartoonist on top of it all. I, I did a, a comic of you and Tom. Uh, <laughs> and, huh. uh, I, I, wanted, I, I kept getting a lot of people saying, oh, you know, okay, so I, I've got these shadow people or the hat man is coming in my house all the time. I don't know what to do. And, and I would tell them, 
you know, this is how you would clear your home and how you should bless it and, and whatnot and make sure you get everything. And and it was hard to explain it all the time. So I, being a cartoonist, I'm like, you know, let me do a visual. And so I did this, like, comic, like, picture book and essentially showing how to go about blessing your home and made it made it fun made it you know comical and and whatnot and it's short it's sweet it's cheap it's a a few bucks just so people have that on hand as a as a reference and i've i've had a lot of good feedback in regards to it and um you know i I have the background coming from a, a christian faith background and um I find that more often in this country, especially, you know, we most people here are, are of the Christian faith or Catholic, and uh, even if they look away from the faith, they they may have started out with it. And I get a lot of folks that uh, tell me, well, you know, I I don't get into that religious stuff, but anyways, the devil showed up. What do I do? And I'm <laughs> like, you know, okay, guys, you know. <laughs> What were you raised as? And it's like, well, Catholic. I'm like, okay, can can you can you lean on your faith for a minute, <laughs> you know? And, and it, you're looking. At, you would think looking at something so absolutely evil that it would convince you there has to be an opposing force called God or something, and 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 know that and trust that and use that knowledge to bless your home and protect yourself because these things are betting on you not to rely upon that. And those people who do recall, like in, in the moment of experiencing the most gut-wrenching experience they could ever imagine, having like the hat man or the shadow people coming at them, to throw their faith to Adam and, and say a prayer or say in Jesus' name, get out of here, and, and to use that and know it and own it. And even, even those that have dropped their faith many years ago, they are having success in blessing their home in, in the way that I, I put in this book. And it's just, it's really sad, you know, I, I, so many people are like, I'm non-religious, or I'm a recovering Catholic, and I'm like, well, recover faster but, but, and get but, back to it, you but, know? But they're spiritual still, right? Spiritual, they'll say spiritual, and I'm like, you know, what does that mean? You know, own it. <laughs> Where are you? Because <laughs> uh, you really need it now, and don't be shy to to say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, okay? Why be ashamed? Why be afraid? I, I find that a lot of people are hesitant Say well, that I think you could say that and still be spiritual, don't you? I'm sorry, what's that? I, I think you can say what you just said about Jesus and still be spiritual. You don't have to be oh. religious to do right. that. Right, exactly. That's my Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to get, to get at, too, because I don't go to church, but I know where my faith lies. It's in the Christian faith, so I'm spiritually uh, motivated. And, and you believe Christian in God. Faith. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, and and it's it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. They they treat it like it's science fiction these days, or something, or huh. or something. A character in South Park is Jesus now, or Family Guy. And I'm like, no, he's really, <laughs> he's really real. And and I, I wrote that book. Jesus is no joke. I I was a big skeptic of Jesus coming around in this day and age. And you know, I wrote it in my first book, The Secret War, essentially bashing the idea that Jesus shows up and. And here I had some several encounters, and and I had to write a book about it. So it's like I I'm the type of person. It's like I just can't keep it to myself if I know it to be true, and and just be as painfully honest as I possibly can, and hope that people get the the point. So now, Heidi, let's talk about my sighting years ago of those shadow rodents. Yeah. That were going across the street in line. They looked like armadillos right. with uh, antennas. Uh, they were weird little things, uh, each one maybe 8 to 10 inches long, but but shadows, you know, in line, going right across the, the road, just off they went into their own little world. What were they? You were the first to tell me about them, and then one of my good friends experienced, she thought somehow, like I'm, I live in Chicago, that a city mouse or rat got into her place <laughs> and ran into this closet and she cornered it and blocked everything in and was terrified to open it. And I came over and opened it. There's nothing there. She's like, wow, I can't believe this. She's like, and she described something that looked very similar to what you said. I, I, I think that is a possibility that it could definitely have been uh, another form that these shadow beings took. Because they, I've seen one that looked just like a cat. 
and uh, mimicked my cat. I had a black cat and totally mimicked the, the, the cat. So they do it to fool us and to pull our attention and to pull into that. I, it's it's really bizarre. But it, you know what? I, I got to tell you, George, just last week, I, I can't remember when I had a hat man dream, honestly. I had one when I was a kid many, many years ago. I think I was 10 years old. And I had one last week. And um, I was having a regular dream. Was Jordan. it frightening? I'm sorry? Was it frightening? No. It, this is, it, it's so crazy. Like, I, I had such confidence. And, and I was in the middle of having a conversation with somebody in my dream. And literally, he pops right up in between the two of us. Like, you know, it was out of, it was just out of order. Like, what? It, and I'm like, oh, really? Right there. I, the, I grabbed his hat, George. You grabbed the hat of the, the hat person? Face, <laughs> and I shoved him to the ground and I said, I don't like you and I never will. Could you feel him? I, he was so solid. He was so solid. I couldn't. Weird. It was just unbelievable to me how I felt the edge of his hat and it was like a shorter top hat and solid black but absolutely solid, and got the top of his hat, pushed it into his face, and just, and, and I'm so right-handed, and I did it with my left hand. I remember thinking, that is so weird. Why did I grab him with my left hand? But, and just with confidence, and just shoved him to the ground, and he, like, melted into the ground and whisked away. Just the... That that quickly? Yeah, yeah, that quickly. Yep. And, and I, I I think sometimes it, it I don't I don't have that kind of gut reaction fear of him i know he hates my guts and the feelings are mutual and i'm i'm like hey i'm on a mission to try to get people to be aware and get that confidence to rely on their faith i don't do any of this without me having a prayer rolling in the back of my head saying oh god let me get through this one uh, so it, it's a it's a it's a joint effort i guess you could say in trying to uh, rid the world of of these things it, and it literally it's spiritual warfare it's I, I tell people I, I, I'm, I'm a Christian author who just so happens to write about these odd things because I could not do this and, and be okay without being possessed and harassed by these things for all, all, all time, honestly. So if I didn't have the faith that I do. So it's, it's the only way that I can do this stuff. Has anybody ever reported that the shadow person or the hat person had a weapon in their hands, like a knife or a gun? Uh, no, I haven't had that. I've heard of a cane, but I've never heard of him using it. Um, the sickle from the, the Grim Reaper-like types, uh, I haven't heard of him using Do they that talk? Either. Oh, yeah. Hat Man is chatty. Um, he likes to let people know where they stand. Oh, What kind of voice do they have? Oh, my gosh. Hat Man has a very deep, guttural voice, and I think I heard him about a month ago in my room again I haven't had any interactions with this guy. I don't know how or why he's he's popped up. And he called my name. And I sat up. I'm like, what was that? And it was a deep, growly guttural. And I'm like, Heidi. this is what people say that he sounds like. Heidi. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I am i don't know what he's ticked about. I must be rubbing some salt in some wound. But whenever I know... Uh, my family or friends are getting harassed. I know I'm doing something right, but he's come at me, and that has not happened uh, except for when I was about to put out that uh-huh. book on the Hat Man. So, how, how do you get rid of them? Well, that's what this book is. Um, I see shadow people in the Hat Man. It's a it's a methodical blessing that you need to really take part in as well. Is and it a hundred percent? Does it work? You know, I haven't had anybody come back and say, sorry, that didn't work, Heidi. It didn't work. Okay. Um, I've had people say, uh, when the hat man came at him, saying, in Jesus' name, go away, that it didn't work. And I'm like, you know, you got to have some faith behind what you're saying as well, though, too. So, But the name of Jesus is really powerful. And But I have heard of hat man, like, laugh at some things and uh, say, that doesn't work on me or whatever. But then eventually it, it would. So he, he, he bluffs as well. But, Do you uh, need a, cro- a crucifix in your hand or anything like that? I tell people to get a necklace that has a cross on it, uh-huh. and whether okay. it's a crucifix or not, and uh, use that cross necklace in the blessing and go from every room, every corner, and using uh, holy water or spring water 
and blessing it. And I, I, I put it all in detail as best as I could in the book. I call it like a, an, a, an adult picture book, but it's for all ages. I've heard of, from kids and adults. They're like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, when I, when, I, when I heard that it's an adult picture book, I went, oh, Heidi, I don't think we could show any of these pictures, but yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty not clean. That type. I've, I've thought about that. Some people, that wording, it's like adult picture books. Like, no, no, like something Stephen Colbert puts out, but it's silly. But I'm like, okay, hold on. It's, it's a picture book for adults and kids to show them how to get rid of <laughs> these creatures. So <laughs> it's all kosher and cool. Don't worry. Do you think these creatures, I'll call them entities, that's probably yeah. a better word, might have been around since mankind? I really do believe that these have these are ancient and have been around for some time. Yes. I, and again as I as I mentioned, I think that they're not quite from here. Um though they may pull some people underground. Uh people have had these oh my gosh, a lot of out of body experiences as of late. I've heard a lot of that people leaving their bodies and they see their body in their bed and and Hatman is usually the one to grab them and try to drag them underground or drag them outside. And they're, they're seeing their tether to their body, the string that people describe sometimes in near-death experiences, and they see he's trying to pull at that. Or, I mean, just horrific stuff. But you know, I wanted to let people know, too, uh, at the beginning of, of most of my shows, The Outlander, I take people's emails and their calls, and uh, I address them all. So I welcome people to write me as much as they'd like. Put in the email to uh, dustoutlander at gmail.com or heidihollis at gmail.com, and, and I'll answer uh, their emails. I'm not a psychic. I'm not a guru. Just somebody who's been through a lot of stuff and found some answers, and uh, I'm hoping to help people figure this stuff out and give them the upper hand. Ms. Heidi, have you ever been physically harmed by these entities? Uh, personally, I have not, uh, luckily. I, but I've known many of people that have been scratched, uh, pushed, shoved. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've been fortunate in that department, thank God. But, uh, you know, the horror kind of scars you, though. It really does. Oh, I bet. How about anybody killed? Has that ever happened? I, I'm pretty certain because, I mean, these entities are trying to cause harm when they shove people downstairs. I mean, some people might have died, and we sure wouldn't hear about it. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain. It, it. I know that I've had people who've told me that, uh, you know, they, they've been plagued with a hat man or something like that, and, and they weren't suicidal, only to find themselves in the hospital and them being told that they attempted suicide. It's like... I know it had to be him because he threatened it. He said he was going to make me do that type of thing, but I sure didn't do it. And, you know, here they're dubbed as a suicidal person ever since, you know. It's really sad. It is sad. It's also scary, isn't it? It is. To to not have that control, to have this guy do this. I, I, I know I've, I've mentioned on your show some time ago about a, a little girl who was strung up by her throat through her bunk bed. I mean, a little girl wouldn't try to commit suicide that way, but sure did look like it, except that her head wouldn't, or her body wouldn't fit Jeez. through. Was she okay? Slaps. Yes, yeah, she is. Thank God. Well, now, what did she say? Was she a witness to this? She was a witness to the hat man coming nightly to her, her bedroom, and her mother didn't believe her. Her mother took the light bulb out of her light because she kept it on every night, and she said, this guy, this tall guy is saying he's going to get me. And mom had a, a party and locked her daughter in the room so she wouldn't come out. And then went to go check on her and found her. She was like eight or seven years old. And her body was hanging through the wooden slabs on her bunk bed. And her head was on the other side. Oh, jeez. Her mother had to get uh, two guys from the party to break apart the bunk bed and resuscitate her. And with her first words, she screamed, he got me. Mom believed her after that and wouldn't let her sleep alone. And then they moved. And she never experienced him again. But, I mean, he, he made a little girl look like she was trying to kill herself, you know, strung her up by her neck. I mean, that's, that's just so sick and twisted. And people are on this sleep paralysis kick. I'm like, sleep paralysis doesn't shove your body of a little girl through the slabs of a bunk bed. Do you think an exorcist would be able to assist and help? 
You know, it does get to a level sometimes with people, depending on their behavior, uh, if there's a lot of argument, a lot of uh, different things going on, they are out of control. Yeah, I, I think that uh, some of these people get to the level of possession where they do need an exorcism and a blessing of the house. That's a start, but they're going to have to go from within, and they need help to get that thing out. Do you think if you weren't the one that coined the phrase hat man that we'd even have this issue? Maybe you Ooh. conjured this thing up, Heidi. You know, um, I I started getting, uh, I, I put the image of him on my website, and people were reacting and responding, and I knew pretty early on that this guy was different than shadow people, but every time I went to look into the topic, something horrible would happen, or a lot of nightmares to people around me, and they knew it was connected to me, and I'd get these phone calls. Heidi, what are you working on? Could you please stop? I can't sleep. And it's like, oh, so I kept backing off. And, um, yeah, it was, um, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. He's been around for a long time, but sometimes I can't help but to think and know that there's a contagion element to it. Uh, people that say, you know, I was okay. He, he had come in my life before and I feel like he's watching me now because I heard you on the radio or something. And it's like, oh gosh, you know, people just have to protect themselves because, He's looking anyways. He's he's growing his force anyhow. And, um, yeah, it's like, I, you know, what do I do? Hold off and not inform people and try to equip them with uh, the means to protect themselves? Because I, I just don't think so, you know. And I've, I've, I've kind of tossed that idea around, like, you know, could it be? You know, am I helping to spread this guy around? And I'm like, gosh, I don't know. People are, are reaching out to me still almost weekly to say, Wow, I thought I was the only one, you know, so they didn't hear about this. So, yeah, that, that's uh, kind of emails that reassure me it's not me. <laughs> uh, you you have a a yeah. personality in yeah. in your laugh, I think is yeah. not one of a funny laugh. I think it's more no. of a nervous laugh. Believe well, it or not. For me, for for me it's like, you know, I I want to I want people to talk about these topics as they would any other topic. Why do I have to shove a flashlight under my, my, my chin to be taken seriously? This is what's cowering people in their, their, their bedrooms to not come out and talk about it. But guess what? I'm, I'm approachable. And it's like I, I know how to clear a room when I want to. I could talk spooky. But where does that get me? It, it doesn't get people to, you know, to come up and, and want to talk to me. They, they, re, they, they go away and they, they sit there with these questions. But... You know, actually, I've had people tell me more often than not that they are more believing somebody like myself than that that lonely person sitting on the couch saying, and then he came out of the closet. You know, I I just have to keep it real. I I was raised in a haunted house. I spoke about this stuff with my my, uh, other nine siblings. You know, we, we just kept it casual. You know, not everybody has to carry on this these topics like everybody else and keep the same level in order to be taken seriously. It's like, no, you know, we, we've got to break that mold. It's like, I, I don't understand that. It's like, oh, but you're laughing. Well, you know, I, I laugh about everything. You know, I, 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 I kicked my knee really hard the other day and guess what? I laughed. You laughed. I so bet. Am I not taking, am I taking it serious? I, see, I would oh, guess it serious. it's, it's your personality that if somebody fell, not that you would not feel bad about them, but you'd probably giggle. Oh no! Well, no, believe it or not, because I'm I'm a therapist, an occupational therapist. So, I when it comes to somebody really injuring themselves, I'm really I'm really empathetic and sympathetic to that type of thing. People so, do laugh yeah. about stuff like that, though. Oh, if it was like somebody I know, well, you know, I'm gonna somebody have a fell laugh, off a curb, but... people laugh. You know, a person sprawled on the street, and people are oh. laughing at them. Oh, that's terrible! No, that that breaks my heart. It's yeah, good. no, I'm sensitive to that kind of thing, but it's. When it comes to the paranormal, I don't understand why people believe fit in the cookie cutter piece or otherwise we're not going to believe you. Well, you know, that I'm not out here to try to believe, make believers out of everybody. I want people to to have the means and the knowledge to be able to protect themselves. That That's it. You know, it's like, my goodness, it, when you get to that point and you meet the hat man, remember this conversation. That's all I want. You know, and, and as for my books, uh, people, 
for years. My books have been free on Amazon Prime. So have a look. I make a great living as a therapist. It, this, this, this is not the, the arena you want to get into if you want to make a, a good living off from it. No, these are a passion project. So uh, check the records on that. <laughs> I, I know people think, oh, gosh, you're just trying to sell your book. No, this is not what that's about. I, this is not. So, uh, yeah. What, does the hat man take different disguises, Heidi? Uh, he changes his outfit up a little bit. Uh, he might sometimes be seen in a brown suit or uh, sometimes pinstripe pants uh, or a cape instead of a trench coat. So he'll change it up sometimes. But uh, uh, but his presence, I, you know, the, the interesting thing, it's like people, it could be a pitch black room, but they could feel his presence and know it is that entity all the time. Uh, I, I found it interesting that the, the caller just now was talking about the alien abduction experience being connected to the shadow people experience. And I had a heck of a time trying to get word of that out there. But now as people look further into these topics, they're, they're seeing that direct line. And, and are you, do you, do you believe that? Oh, from the start, from the start, my book, the secret war, I, yeah. the first book I spoke about the alien abduction connection to these beings. And so I came at it from a different perspective. And oddly enough, people that, believe in ghosts a lot of them don't believe in ufos and vice versa and i'm like you, you got to be kidding me <laughs> would you so, would you think that these creatures are more extraterrestrial or more demonic i think they come from out there and they have great knowledge of matters of the soul um i call them demons because they do answer to uh jesus name why is that you know, same with these uh, aliens. They answer to that. They will leave. And uh, I've heard the, the argument of a lot of people who experience or research the alien abduction phenomenon. They're like, no, no, the aliens just uh, let you believe that because, you know, the aliens made us. I'm like, oh, gosh. You know, it, I'm Christian. <laughs> I'm never shy to say that. And uh, it's like, you know, people will believe what they want to believe. And it's like, you know, again, not here to try to convince people of anything, but to offer uh, answers to experiences that a lot of people are having and to keep it comfortable. Laugh when you want to. Treat it like it. Talk about this like you would talk about any other topic in your life. You know, it's like instead of slowing your roll, okay, I'm going to talk in my spooky voice now. You know, come on. I, I can do that. But that's that's not my personality. And I guess you would rather be confronted by a shadow person than a hat person, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you could say that, that's for sure. And you know what? I, I have to tell you, George, I already got some messages from Freemasons. I, I don't think they're all evil, okay? My dad was a Freemason. Right. Um, so it's, like, it's okay, everybody. But <laughs> I think there's higher rankings that people are not aware of. And, uh, yeah, they, they need to dig deep. <laughs> Heidi, how many how many of us see shadow people out of the side of our eyes? We we catch a glimpse of something yeah. that we knew or know rushed by, and I and I think yeah. it's a shadow person. I think it is too, oftentimes, and uh, a lot of people are like, "Well, why do I see it in my peripheral vision?" And you know, uh, we have these these cones on the the side of our our vision that uh, it, it's very primal. So it's it, we see things uh, creeping up on us from our peripheral vision. It's more sensitive to the differences between lights and darks. So that's why we're, we're able to uh, spot things and not always see it head on, especially if it's just a fluctuation between the lights and the dark. So I, I think that uh, I think a lot of us are, are keen to picking up on their presence and because they're getting it's getting crowded out there. You know, a lot of people have asked me, have you ever put yourself out there for an exorcism where the hat man is involved? And I haven't gone to that extent just yet. But, oh, man, would that be interesting to see if he would cough up his actual name instead of toying with people the way that he does, giving them a, a old scratch. You know, he'd say his name is Scratch. Uh, he's he's called himself, uh, what is it? I think somebody told me Stanley once. I'm like, come on now. Uh, and then the more recent uh, instances have him been calling himself Hat Man. So he's not being honest and he's not being direct about exactly who he is. <clears throat> but I think it would be definitely interesting 
to be in that situation to have the right team because again you know what what makes me leery and weary is this this entity really does not like me and me putting myself out there in the midst of such a thing <clears throat> I, I think it could end really badly for me unless I mm-hmm. have the right protection around me um, so yeah I could <laughs> I would definitely love that opportunity to um, Oh, gosh, kind of have a face-to-face with this guy, and he is a demon. But he'll say he's the demon of all demons. And by what he says and does, and he is in more than one place uh, at a time, uh, usually there's only one of him seen, and there could be a room full of shadow beings. And, uh, yeah, he'll claim to be the the top dog of them all. And um, from what people tell me, you're asking about their telltale signs of, to say this is a hat being uh, or a hat man, you know, I can't say he falls into a mythological creature, uh, so to speak, like no reflection and, and whatnot. But the one distinctive thing, even if he kind of changes up his his look, is when people close their eyes, he feels the same. It, his presence is the same. Even when these recruited people, it feels the same. It's like an extension of hat man. At what point does Hatman become more violent? Um, you know, people who have, uh, especially women that have had a lot of encounters with him, and he becomes rapey. He's he will rape women. Um, he's also been known to do it to men, but mostly women. Um, so it's when he gets uh, he gets close enough and and, and a constant uh, presence. Uh, almost like he, he baits these women. He tries to make them feel secure, and, and he's a protector. And then he slides into their bed, and uh, he gets to be a, a rapey. It's, it's disturbing. <sighs> you know, because they work alongside of these so-called aliens that have very demonic qualities as well, it, it can make you wonder, you know, are is this some kind of technological uh, advancement that uh, they're utilizing to get into people's homes? But what is this ability to reach into somebody's chest and rip their soul out? What is that? And and why is he threatening to take them to the pits of hell? Why does he smell like sulfur sometimes? Why is he raping? Why is he abusing? Why is he you know, doing all of these horrible things that are such a... a a definitive uh, uh, definition from the Bible to say what evil is, what a demon is. I mean, if he's not fitting the bill, I don't know what is. You think he's the devil, don't you? I sure am leaning towards that. I mean, I wish I had, uh, you know, no one has all the answers, but it's like I sure am leaning towards that he's not lying about that element. And, and his duty, what he's doing and pulling people together to follow his cause, to do his his job um, that he feels is his job, to reap souls. I mean, reaping souls. This is what he's telling them to do. Uh, what could collecting them. He's collecting them. The clock's got us now. Heidi, thank you again. Always great talking to you. Heidi Hollis, her websites are all linked up at coasttocoastam.com. If you want to listen to our show ad-free, 24-7, access audio archives, live chat with me, and much more, you need to become a Coast Insider now. So you're telling me your grandmother, who died a few weeks ago, came and visited you last night in your bedroom, and you're not scared? Are extraterrestrials living among us? I don't know if it's true or not, folks, but we're going to find out. If you enjoy stories like these and want to learn more about the mysteries of the universe with me, become a Coast Insider now to access hundreds of our archive shows to listen anytime, anywhere. Sign up now at coasttocoastam.com slash coastinsider. That's coasttocoastam.com slash coastinsider.